This is the planning board, June 28th, 2018. I will accept a motion for the agenda. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, the first item on the agenda is Mike LaRusso concerning the yep. Riverway. Welcome. Hi, how are you? Mike LaRusso, 10 Roberts Drive, Citroën, Massachusetts. Um, Tell us. Uh, my brother and I own the marina at that property. Uh, we have so uh, for eight years. It was originally developed by Wheeler in the 50s and then went through a bunch of different changes and kept shrinking, shrinking, and shrinking as far as uh, the marine use. Um, currently, for the past 10 years, I've been leasing space at South Shore Auto Parts, as you're aware. That space has been sold. So for the past four or five years, I've been in negotiation with uh, Tony and first uh, Joe Donano, the developers of the Riverway project to purchase the commercial parcel, uh, the parcel that is, um, touches the driftway. Um, the issue is that um, there's some legal issues uh, with back taxes and other things that are above my pay grade, but the, uh, the larger issue is, is one of use. Uh, I plan a permitted use for the, uh, the parcel, but because of the loss of uh, other space in town, my intention is to use the entirety of the property for uh, my use of the marina or other um, permitted uses, so not to include the um, affordable housing component. Okay, this is, from what I understand, um, not an easy situation. Karen? Yes, this is not an easy um, situation. Um, basically, as far as the planning board is concerned, the special permit is not compliant. Okay, the special permit was supposed to have a mixed use building and that hasn't been built. Um, I've been in multiple discussions with town council over the matter. Um, if Mr. LaRusso wants to develop the mixed use building, then a special a modification to the special permit would be necessary if he wants to do what he wants to do it would have to be in conformance with the zoning bylaw. Um, the planning board, um, the planning board should concern itself with the planning board issues being the special permit is not in compliance. There are a number of legal issues. This is all one piece of property and the, basically the area where the um, mixed use building is supposed to go is now belongs to the condo association. So each unit is assessed for, for the taxes for it. Um, so if the board is willing to have Mr. LaRusso, you know, attempt to go forward with this, then a special permit modification would be necessary. You may want to ask for something in return for not having the affordable units and Mr. LaRusso would have to provide all the proper documentation when he submits an application for, um, just like any other project, of, you know, signatures by the owner, et cetera. Can you take a step back yeah. and just give us the set of requirements for the mixed use building itself? The mixed I, don't, I don't have the special permit with me, I guess, so I want to make sure I understand what was required there. was supposed to have, in the basement, um, there was supposed to be room for the marina. Then there was supposed to be a first floor with um, office or retail. And in the condo documentation, Master Deed, it said specific things that could happen there. And on the second floor was supposed to be two affordable units. Um, that were able to be included on the subsidized housing inventory. And when you say basement required room for a marina, what does that mean? That any of the uses that occur in the marina building could go into the basement of this mixed use building. 
because like the engine shop or something like that. I mean that kind of stuff. Not repair. What was, what not, was, not, repa not repair. And so stuff what was like anticipated? That. I mean, did we say or I'm just and maybe Bill remembers he was here, but um, right. I'm trying to get a little bit of the history here. I I can. Uh, it was basically for storage because the marina building itself is below sea level. So to store the uh, golf carts and other things out of the, we, we lost 100% of our equipment this year because of the uh, high tide in March. So that's one of the reasons why this is uh, significantly important to us. There's supposed to be no storage of um, boats on the site and no uh, storage, no repair of, you know, boats on the site either. That was spelled out in the inspection um, permit. But town council has opined that as long as the planning board could entertain a modification, as long as it's in conformance with the zoning bylaw. Presumably that that particular requirement was the result of, and I looked at Mr. Limbacher, was the result of the overall project. That, that this was one element of the overall project and it sort of balanced everything. Yeah. It wasn't like a standalone you could cut out later. Okay. I think what we have learned from this, these things are a learning experience, that we should have, or the owners should have built the front building first and then. Correct. But instead, it got flipped. Mm -hmm. So, Ben. Um, if the economy had stayed the same, the infrastructure would be there. It went south in 07. Yeah. A very long run of recovering the economy, though. This is also and true. plus years. Yeah. Ben? Yeah, could you speak a little bit more as to what your, like what the proposed plans would be for the site, like what sort of use and sure, what, it, what activities are going on? Sure. Um, basically, a general permitted retail use. The retail use there is quite broad. So um, an example would be a coffee shop, retail store. I own a, an apparel brand. I own the third largest fishing brand in the country. Uh, I sell at Pete Belson's next door. Pete Belson's going to have to close because of the sale of that property. Um, what we found over, I, I've been in retail for 30 years. Um, I'm a property developer in my a day job. That's how I met the Donanos uh, to purchase uh, the property to actually keep it from, I, I grew up in Situate and, and wanted to keep it from, keep it a maritime use. Um, so you have both the auxiliary use of being next to condominiums, so something that would benefit the people there. Um, so uh, a coffee shop, a general store, or something like that. And then uh, just uh, ancillary retail uh, that would benefit the marina, such as um, a marine store, such as kayak rental kiosk, uh, ice cream shop, something that gives uh, the people a broader appeal to come to the marina or when they're there at their visit to elongate their visit. OK, so there would be some sort of structure Oh, oh, absolutely. There, my understanding is there, there has to be a structure uh, constructed there. But there's no idea w exactly what that would be at this juncture? Or? No, it would be a, a very similar, it would probably be a seaside look. Um, um, I, I, I was trained, uh, again, grew up in Situate by Mrs. Laidlaw, so I would look to the best uh, uses around to have the prettiest building there. We tend to, uh, my brother and I own a number of buildings in downtown Boston uh, and other areas. We tend to buy, own, and hold. We've lived here our whole life. Our, our objective was, is not to sell the marina. The objective of this is to grow the business and retain this parcel so that the uses, although they sound flexible, are because over a period of time, things may be in vogue and then go out of vogue. So if I said, for example, I want to put in a juice shop, okay, that would be very popular now, but might not be popular five years from now. There are specific limitations in the condo documents about what cannot go in there. And so... Um, Such as? 
a McDonald's or something like that. Oh, yeah. It, I it, mean, um, th there's a whole list of um, things which um, Mr. LaRusso would have to abide by or have to change the condo documents. Sure. Uh, Patty? No, right now, thanks. No? Explain to me how the condo can ended up paying for the back taxes to get the property? No, the condo, the back taxes were not paid. The, there was a tax, there was basically an assessment of a map block and lot that went away. Okay. And so, through all through the town's tax attorney, and it probably never should have been assessed a separate map block and lot. And so, taxes were forgiven, uh, abated, and that's an issue that would have to be worked out as the process goes on. But everything that's been done so far is legal, and town council has opined it's a planning. The planning board's concern is that the special permit has not been complied with. She's been provided all the condo documents. She's been provided the tax title um, stuff. She's been provided Mr. LaRusso's um, uh, property agreement, but as I explained to Mr. LaRusso, the condo association now probably owns the land, so anything that comes in as an application, it would be the burden of Mr. LaRusso to make sure that it's correct. Right. I, I actually slightly disagree. So there was supposedly no parcel because it's a developable right. So there should have been no parcel created. Therefore, that legal contract still has five and a half years um, left to it. Um, I don't know why the town created a parcel where the parcel didn't exist and then took it away for taxes because being a development right and being that it didn't exist, it shouldn't have been taxed. But that's, I'm not either of the Donanos. I'm trying to purchase the property so I can build something so we can move forward. And who would you be buying it from? I'm, right now I'm, no, right now I'm buying it. Uh, I'm, I was unaware of this issue until I met with uh, Karen uh, two weeks ago. Well, there, so there's a bit and of I a was dispute. Unaware, I was about, unaware of this too. So. so there's a bit of a dispute about who has the right to sell it? The Donatos believe that they have five and a half years of a contractual right on their agreement with the town in the special permit that gives them five and a half more years to build this uh, a unit. They were given 10, 11 there's years? A, there's They've already transferred the ownership of it, though. There's something in the master deed about development rights to this um, mixed-use building. Okay, and so it's not exactly in your special permit, but it's in the develop, it's in the condo or master deed. I don't remember which one, but I mean, town council is saying it, the special permit right now is not in compliance, and Mr. LaRusso wants to potentially make it into compliance. Mm -hmm. I'd like to work with you all to help jumpstart the development in the Greenbush Corridor. Your work, but first of all, is the board willing to, if Mr. Russo can come up with the documentation that he can purchase this property, would we be willing as a board to um, have him submit and modify the special permit to allow him to build? I'm not looking for a vote, I just want people to comment. I just, I really have a hard time losing it to affordable units. I mean, I wasn't here for that decision way back when, but just uh, it seems like the, that condition was there for, for a reason. For a reason. I, I have a hard time. Well, there's a, there is a $50,000 performance bond in the tripartite agreement about that. And I would, uh, in addition to purchasing the parcel from the Donanos, I had to purchase the tripartite bond. So I own that money. So. I would negotiate with you to, if we weren't going to put affordable on there, to release all or a portion of that $50,000 to go to a housing trust fund. No, I'm not trying to 
shirk the responsibilities. Remember, I'm not the Donanos. They should have built this property, built on this property. I'm just a business owner where there's no more land near me, and I need to buy this, or it's going to drastically affect my business. Is there no way you can integrate the affordable housing into the, an overall development there? The, um, no. Um, the, um, if you look at what is proposed for retail, we're talking about a 500 square foot space. Also, the building that was Isn't that what was originally there? I'm, I'm sorry, I, I don't have the there original. Was there was nothing there. Nothing was ever there. No, it, no, but I'm, what was originally proposed to be there were two affordable housing units. So on the second must, floor. On the second floor. On the second floor. So, so I'm saying, it, can't there be a second floor on whatever you built? Well, but it's actually that the affordables are actually two stories. So the retail component downstairs is 500 square feet. The affordables are 2,400 square feet. So the original retail was supposed to be 2,400 square feet? No, it's 500 square feet. The, the affordables are quite large in compared. Typically, if you were going to build, so I own a, I developed a building in downtown Boston and we provided 10% of the building as affordable units. The makeup of this building provides more than 50% of the building to the affordable units. But when you integrate the entire development, it was probably a small percentage, right? That's correct, but I'm not the... I know, but that's, that was what was approved, right? And correct. And trying to bifurcate it and sort of ignore mm -hmm. whether that right. was the deal or not, right? And, mm -hmm. um, I, that's, that's what I'm trying to explore here is, is there a way to... Uh, I tend to agree with Ben that, that um, you know, deal we cut included some affordable housing for the town and um, it's, it's my, my answer to you is then why didn't you force the developer to build it well, we'd like to okay well we still got five and a half years maybe we can but <laughs> um, I, I think that what, I, what I'm asking you is there a way for you to look at the development and integrate we would lose so much I, I would lose so much of the space um, and then you have a part the the since the original agreement went in, in a place, the town has changed the zoning of that parcel. So it went from a three-story permittable to a two-story permittable. Um, each dwelling unit is required to have two dedicated parking spaces. So you're asking a lot more than just the physical envelope. Plus, the, the cost to construct two legitimate, uh, you know, more than one bedroom units is substantial. A substantial burden to, to me. That again, right? The, the, as you understand the deal that we cut when we approved it, and Mr. Lindbacher was here when that happened, was this was a comprehensive development that right. included the development of this last piece and included affordable housing as a component of it. And it's only now that we're at this place where people want to carve it off and say, well, that component of the overall big development um, is no longer well, the, the alternative is going to be probably that nothing gets built there. So no affordable housing will get built. Um, no money will go towards affordable housing and no additional property tax revenue will be generated by the town. Is the downside right? Uh, All right, um, Ken. Well, we are at such a state with the affordable housing. If that was one of the agreements, so we need to rethink about that agreement. And do we have the right to do that? That's the question before us. Yes. Yes. So we do have the right to. Do you have the right to do that. You have the right to change the special permit after a public hearing, as long as it's in conformance with the zoning bylaw. You absolutely have the right to do that. That doesn't mean you can't ask for something in exchange for for that. So if, if you gave us your tripod agreement for that fifty thousand dollars, in theory, where does that go? Where, where does that go? I about? think it would have to be accepted by the I board of selectmen to, to be put the into the housing the trust, housing trust mm. for future. Right. I think it would have to be affordable housing. Which, under the face of it, seems to make, I understand, Ben, where you're coming from, but this would go quite a ways toward 
keeping the spirit. Right. And, I, and I'm very happy to discuss the process of relinquishing those funds to you so they're actually put to use instead of sitting for these 10 years that there's nothing going on. So again, is the board willing to have Mr. LaRusso pursue coming up with who owns what and what he can do? Are you willing to do that? And then we can modify this special plan. Where is the original developer in all this? I mean, that's, right? I mean, shouldn't he be sitting here at the table talking to us at the same time? I just, uh, I, it seems like you've been thrown to the wolves, so to speak. Um, the, I've, I've spoken for years with the original developer. Um, you know, I purchased the marina from the original developer. Um, you know, they had difficulty when the economy changed. Um, when they were building the units. I also think that they, uh, I, if it was me, I would have kept it a maritime use. I think we need maritime use or I would have made twice as many um, lesser uh, extravagant units um, and build the housing stock uh, because it's right next to the train and done a transit-oriented development. Um, none of those things happened. I'm not the original developer. All I know is that I'm being forced to buy the, the rights and pay a premium for the, for the tripartite agreement, uh, because he put money into that, in order to purchase it. Um, his claim is he owns the parcel, he has the contractual right to sell it, and that's his story. But he needs to prove it. I, I think that's for people above my pay grade or the, the attorneys, <laughs> but. No, no. When, when somebody, if you grant permission for, you know, Mr. LaRusso to pursue this, then somebody would have to, when they submit an application, prove all this. I, Mr. Donato did call a couple times when I was on vacation, and I left him a voice message the other day, and I have not, re I have not heard back from him. Well, I mean, why did I think that we should grant him that permission, so maybe jumpstart this process again? The original, the intent, the, the affordable housing was really the key to the, the part of the approval. Mm -hmm. It was an integral part of it. Right. But now you come back up and, and I guess I'm not convinced totally that you couldn't figure out how to put a affordable component to it. Um, I could and I would just lose money so I wouldn't build the project. <laughs> And then it would sit faro, and you'd lose the bond, and there would be no tax revenue, there would be no property built there. It would revert. When the development agreement um, expires in five and a half years, the land will re automatically revert to the condo association and just be green space. Never to be developed. And there is supposed to be a conservation restriction that I don't believe we have on the remaining um, condo association land. That's the green space. We don't have the restriction? No, we don't have that. After this long a time? Yes, we don't have this conservation restriction. Again, probably and because I there wasn't completion of the third phase of the... Right. I mean... So what is the board's pleasure? Bill? I mean, I'm willing to look at what, what is proposed. But somewhere in my mind, I'd like to figure out how we get it. Would you consider the fifty thousand dollars as an affordable component to give it to the housing trust for future affordable housing? Well, the way it's being presented is it's either that or nothing. So there you go. In order for me, in order for me to have legal, my legal people put money at this, I need to figure out what's the best feasible way. If it's build the building that's there, okay, I don't need to alter the permit. I don't need to do anything. It's just figuring out who owns the land. So I don't need to come before you for anything, is my opinion. If town council opined today that if he was to build the building right there, right now, today, he could do it. Right, and would have two affordable housing units. Right. Hmm? That's fine. Go for it. Right. I'm not interested in that. <laughs> so what I'm saying is that I wouldn't, I wouldn't proceed forward. Yes.
in, in that because the several hundred, the whole purpose of linkage, create, it, it providing to a developer to put a percentage of his project as affordable is to take the money that he's projected to make from the whole project and earmark a percentage for that. I have no, I, I had no financial interest in that project. So I'm just a person coming who wants to buy that parcel. If I could have afforded the money to purchase the Donovan land at South Shore Auto Parts, I would have purchased it. But a million two to build a building, you, you know, you have to look at it. I know you're looking at it historically, what should have been done by the developer. I'm not the developer. Let's look at what should be done to improve the Greenbush Corridor and build a vibrant uh, area there. Patty? Yes. I think you should go forward and see what we can see what we come up with. Figure out what's right. and how we can move it around. Right? Yeah. Ben? Yeah, that's fine. I mean, go for it. It's fine. I would say on the fifty thousand, that's that was just half an arbitrary number that was in the truck track part tight agreement. Let's yeah. maybe see some data on how that would potentially offset the loss of these potential affordable units because maybe that number has some flexibility. So I mean if we find out it's just as beneficial, then great, fine. But if it's like scaled, if it's small peanuts, then it's not doing as much. But. Let's try. Steve? Uh, I won't have to listen. I'm not committing to anything at this point. Uh, mm -hmm. I would like also to know what our recourse is with the current developer. Um, because I feel like you're coming in on, on his few strings. Yeah, sort of. My understanding from town council is you've already taken the recourse. You've taken you've you have removed his ownership in the land and given it in totality to the condo association. So according to the town, he doesn't no longer owns it. I, I will, okay, I guess I will defer to. I haven't had that conversation with anybody yet, but I would like to know what recourse we have. I will clarify okay. that with town council, but I mean she has said it's a permitting issue and. Um, you know, it's been so through. Well, it's up to you. I mean, it has to be. If you, if you entertain a modification, it has to be in yeah. to the zoning bylaw. No, I'm, I'm not talking about entertain modification. What's our recourse for not implementing the permit as required? I guess you take legal action. But you have a solution that. You know, a potential solution that is is avoiding, potentially avoiding legal action. Right, but it also isn't delivering on the promises. Right. So, I guess I would like to understand what other recourse we have as a board. And it doesn't have anything to do with you. Right. One of the other things was that there, when there was a parcel created, there's approximately eight thousand or nine thousand dollars in back taxes owed, so the other thing would be to work with town council, get the parcel reinstated, and that's money that um, could be achieved from the developer in order to get a municipal lien certificate. So the developer needs a municipal lien certificate to sell me the parcel, mm -hmm. and so if if and I'm not town council, but there was a bill presented to him. That he didn't pay, mm -hmm. so that in a you know there now you're you're ratcheting up the money that it was abated because it was determined that it was improperly assessed. Mm -hmm. All right, and it's so there is no outstanding. The, 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 the taxes are gone. Taxes. They're gone. The taxes yeah. disappeared. Right, because they they've been abated. So as as I said, I'd be willing to listen, right? Mm -hmm. But I also would like to, in parallel, understand because I I think we're just you know we've. Um, the developer has shirked the promise that he made so long ago. And by bifurcating here, and I understand your position because you're, you're just a businessman looking for additional property to do something in, and that, which is fine, right? Mm -hmm. um, but Well, but it's also the only parcel that's adjacent to my property. Yeah. That, so it's, it's not just, if I could find another piece of parcel, I would. There aren't any. 
and and in terms of sort of the overall vision for the the Greenbush area, you know, we would anything we would do there, we'd want to make sure it integrates into the overall vision mm -hmm. of the Greenbush quarter development. Mm -hmm. right? So but I, that, that would be my opinion. Mr. LaRusso has um, said that he would be willing to look at that mm -hmm. to integrate it into the that vision of the Greenbush Carter. Yeah. All right, I think we need to move along. Um, we're mm -hmm. running around in a circle. So I think you need to do some diligence here and, and see what you can do with the property owner. And we'll go forward back and see us. All right, thank you. Thank you for your time. Sure. Excuse me. How big of a piece are you carving off? I, the the building size or the land size? Okay. The, the land. land is, I think, six thousand square you're, feet. They're not carving off a piece of yeah. land. They're carving off development rights. The land, the, your your special permit went with the whole parcel. Yeah. But are you buying a lot of land? A no, no, that's the thing. I'm only buying a developable right. So do you have a ground lease or something? For no, land? there's <laughs> un nothing exists until the building is completed. That's why it's an extremely risky thing on my part. So I've paid then, then a, a certificate of occupancy um, gets um, produced and the uh, ostensibly the land above the building above so everything you get ownership fee simple ownership rights of the land or no the land is all held in common by the condominium so you get a permanent perpetual easement or how does it work? I, it's it gets even confusing there are three yeah there are three condominiums there you know there's make a list yeah all right thank yeah. you very much thank you our next item is an informal discussion of the status of the project. Uh, Peter Genta. Is he here this evening? Yeah, he's in the Good evening, Peter Janta with Greenbush Station, LLC, owner of uh, 50 Country Way. Attorney Steve Gard for the applicant, or in this case, the owner, permit holder. Okay, we're here to uh, find out the status of your project, sir. Yes. Uh, <coughs> Go ahead. Give them an overview of the construction. Yes, yeah, so we're, we're uh, uh, complete with uh, Building C. We're 80% complete with Building uh, B, and we're probably 50% or well with 70% of with Building A uh, complete. We have uh, put together a construction schedule. for the uh, site improvements for uh, this is from uh, Mike McDougall contractors essentially the building A is ready for occupancy yeah okay tell, tell them that. Now, <coughs> we have a list from the building inspector of the outstanding issues oh sure of what he's looking for? Yes. Um, the first one is the final inspection report from the structural engineer. Do you have that? That's being worked on. Uh, it'll be ready on Monday. Uh, final construction control affidavits from architect, structural, civil. That's the same report that'll be ready on Monday. Uh, there should be a punch list for building and site by architect and engineers, outstanding items and issues still to be addressed. I'm not aware of what's on that punch list, uh, um, other than the... The building permit, the red <coughs> card with all, all final sign-offs from town ins um, inspectors. Yeah, we've got that at the construction trailer. 
Fire Department Certificate of Compliance for Sprinkler and Alarm Systems. We are scheduled for testing on Tuesday. Uh, Fire Department memo confirming emergency access is acceptable. Fire Department wants an one way in, one way out, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, so they were on site and tested with their uh, vehicles mm -hmm. and sent a report by email. Off of the emergency way onto a private way? Yes. True place. And, and has that been addressed? Um, no, it has not been addressed. So, on that note, um, the special permit requires the owner to construct a, an emergency access road from the back of our property to um, True Place, I believe it is. And that in that essentially that's exactly what we're doing well we, we don't control through place it's a private road the you know it, it's a private way open to the public but it's plowed by the town you know it's one of those private ways it gets plowed last after everybody else uh, I'm sure for essential access to the area but um, the special permit itself it, it, it is it just it, the condition is is that we construct we extend an emergency access road to Drew place which is what we're willing to do. I know that Mr. Orenberger had sent in a letter representing um, some folks that live on Drew Place, but again, our, our permit says to construct this access road to Drew Place, and that's, that's a condition, and that's what we intend to do. Controlling Drew Place as a private way, is, it's out of our control, so we don't have any sort of mechanism. Um, we certainly have offered, with the fire department on our side, where the access road leaves our property, there will be bollards in a chain. It's emergency access only, so there won't be cars going back and forth. We can certainly do the same thing on the um, access, the other side on the MBTA land, which we have the easement to do so for. We can put the bollards up there. So. Have you spoken to Mr. Reynolds? I haven't, but I spoke to Bill today, and I explained to, we went over his letter, and I explained my position with respect to the condition in the special permit in the, you know, the, uh, the issues regarding the, the private way and we're not asking for access over that private way the private way is access for fire and police which I think they would have by virtue of their position in the town over any private way so we're not looking to use that to access our property in any way it is simply to provide a mechanism for the fire trucks not to have to back out of the property so Bill had asked me he's not here tonight and he didn't intend to come he just wanted to point out to the planning board what he did in his letter and I committed to meet with Bill and see if we could figure out how not to have this this uh, happen glitch. yeah well, yeah it, exactly and so. so you all need to work out this glitch because I think it's very important yeah no I, it, I think it should also be clear that the purpose <coughs> I mean the requirement in the permit was not a requirement to build a road to build a road for emergency access right <laughs> And to the extent that, that <coughs> emergency access isn't available, that's a problem. So it, nobody's going to care about who owns what when the fire truck can't get through there, right? So, so here's a question. Uh, right now, Drew Place has access to the. Uh, it's all accessible <coughs> by the fire departments today. <coughs> now you have someone coming in and saying, "I plan on blocking that access." Yeah. Well, doesn't the town have a right to tell them not to? I don't know. So I think I that. I discussed it with town yeah. council today, and town council has opined that that's a private property dispute. The fire ch um, <coughs> deputy Elliot would like two means of egress, um, and I would recommend to the board that some of this may stem from there's a little inc inclusion um, of debris over the property line onto the adjacent property, and maybe if the property line was staked and that was cleaned up, that may go a long way. To resolve this issue. To resolve yeah, the issue. So, um, Attorney Orenberger pointed that out to me, and I will honestly say I'm not up to speed on that. I did talk to Mr. Genta about it, and the, the property line was staked. They're talking about the area behind Mr. Reynolds' property that is abuts the uh, MBTA, the, the right of way. Uh, sorry, the MBTA property. Um, my client was is under the impression that the, the, lot, the lot line was staked, and all of the disturbance that he made was on the MBTA side. 
and this the lot line was staked by Paul Marabito, who works for Mr. Reynolds. He doesn't work. He doesn't work for us. So, I'm a little concerned about what that controversy is. I agree with Miss Joseph that if, and I told William on the phone, if, if this is an issue, we'll deal with it. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll we'll write a letter that we will loan and seed whatever we disturb. We'll fix it and make you, it right. You all need to deal with this. Mm -hmm. Okay, the special <coughs> permit dictates that you have, to, and the fire department has said to. Access egress. You have to have it. I'm going to let you duke it out. This is a property right thing, yep. and it's in <coughs> your court. Okay. And but I would recommend that you ask that the property <coughs> line be staked not just along the MBTA easement, but along the side of the property line abutting building uh, B and A down the whole property line. Well, are because you I think that there's when a I spoke with a fence there. Oh, that was. Um, what he conveyed to me is there were stockpiles that were going over the um, property line. Okay, so we, we would we would not let that exist once it, if it's brought to our attention, and we would ask Mr. Reynolds for a temporary license to get the stuff out of there for the moment. We'll, we'll work that out. But uh, my understanding is is the controversy was not on the property line between the two properties; it was in the back. But uh, I think there's a fence there now, or some sort of. There's a fence between the two properties. Yeah. So we will. We'll deal with it. Yep. Yeah. You Absolutely. Have to, you have to do this. We'll take. Well, we will work it out with right. Mr. Ornberg or Mr. Um, we need evidence of fees paid for the water and sewer department. Has that been done? That'll be done <coughs> next week. We're working on that arrangements. Be done next week. Yeah. Um, copy of the elevator inspection certificate. They're scheduled from the state on Tuesday. Tuesday. As built foundation plan stamped by a civil engineer. I've got that. You've got that. Sign off by planning what the conditions of approval have been met, and they have not. So, you have your work cut out for you, sir, <laughs> to get this done. I know that you wanted to be have occupancy <coughs> as of the 1st of July, but I don't see that any way that that's going to happen. So, it, it understood. And I think there's actually a couple more punch list items Ms. Joseph had sent over an owner's agreement. Um, by the way, we I accepted all of Town Council's changes to the agreement. I added a, a property address in a title reference <laughs> and a notary clause for Mr. Gent's signature. So it's ready to be signed in. in and I received additional comments this afternoon from uh, Mr. Pritchard, which I will get oh. to you um, tomorrow. Okay. Tomorrow as well. No worries. But it, it, it's in. I don't think there were too many significant comments. No, I, I don't think, think they were. The primary issue was, um, I think, I'd like to see something that specifically calls out the public access. Oh, we're going to have an easement for the public access. That's, That's a separate. separate. Oh, I understand. Yeah. Okay. But I'd like to see something in the agreement that calls out that the public act. There should be no obstruction or anything else of the public access at any time, right? I mean, this is, and and no limitation of public of the public to access the. Water. Right. You're, you're oh. doing an easement. You have an easement as part of your conditions for the special yeah. permit. I just would like no, to see I, it in I, the rules and regulations. I think it should be in the rule. I agree yeah. with you. Yes. Well, I think the I, I didn't specifically read every single rule and re regulation, but I thought it was you cannot obstruct or block any common areas, and that would be considered a common area. My recollection is that the regulations address that and like the tenants. Uh, I would like to see that particular piece called out separately. It's one more paragraph that makes Did everybody on the in the in the uh, apartment complex aware that that is a public path right? okay I mean, did if, you if they read the rules and regulations did you propose some language or do you want me to do that I just propose the concept okay if you want to put the okay. language in I'm, I'm sure and you're looking for that we'll add that to the rules and regulations of the that the, the two-page document that's in the back of the the um, owner's agreement yeah, that, and that'll go like with that'll be attached to all the leases so that they'll know that that's a public walkway also, too, there was some question about um, bedrooms. Yeah, I, um, I spoke with Mr. Gento the other uh, day, and um, I asked him for a revised parking plan because one of the, um, the loading area for Building A is labeled as parking area. The design plans, <coughs> so he has to get that. Um, the design plans indicate that there were supposed to be 16 one bedrooms, 14 two bedrooms for a total of 30 units. And the design plans broke them up into building A, building B, and building C. Um, right now, the, what's on the ground doesn't agree with the design plans. Um, building, building 
C has eight bedrooms. <clears throat> I mean, eight one bedrooms. This is, this is gonna be part of and, the bricks. Um, as Bill planned the right to the parking layout. Yeah. Or just the foundation. That is the parking layout here. That hasn't changed. She just wanted a numbering system. It has eight be eight okay. one bedrooms and two three two bedrooms, and one of the units listed as a one bedroom has a den, <coughs> and that's going to be assessed by the sewer division as a bedroom. The den is yes because it has a closet. <coughs> There's another unit unit uh, I believe it's three oh one um, that has two bedrooms and a study. The study is removed from, doesn't have a closet, et cetera, so, um, it's, and it's removed, it's far away from the two bedrooms. So the board needs to determine what you want to do about the units. <coughs> so building B, so it's does, that, does that mean we have like the, those two units? Are they, are they, are they three bedroom units? No, the one in um, the one in Building C is means a two bedroom unit, and the one in I mean up to in Building A, I guess I could let that one go. It has a study and it's far enough removed. It doesn't have a closet, you know, etc. So um, I can see the difference between that one. And the one in building C. Right. Well, I guess personally, I'm not inclined to change the count, right? Even if it's assessed as, as um, from a sewer assessment point of view, assessed as a two bedroom unit. It's not a two bedroom. We're not counting it as a two bedroom unit. And I wouldn't think we're okay with advertising a two bedroom unit if it's not designed as such, right? It's yeah, designed it's as one bedroom with a den, right? So. Yeah. Mike, Michael Offen, I'm the leasing manager. Um, that unit, it's uh, 304C, is um, a single, you know, pre reservation is a single lady going in there. Everyone that's walked through there, no one has seen it as a two bedroom unit. It's been marketed. As a one bedroom plus ten. I, I guess I'm not inclined to change the count in that regard. Um, whatever the sewer department charges you is what they charge you. Well, you how know? would you like to protect this for the future? <coughs> That's the question. I mean, just because it's going to be rented now as a one bedroom, what, um, what do you well, want we to do? We have the same issue for the all, future. Right? So we, we're designating that these are the one bedroom units and these are the two bedroom units. Right. And nothing shall change that unless we change it, right? Yeah. Right. So tell me how we have to document that. I mean, that seems pretty straightforward, right? Isn't that how it is in the uh, permit? Yeah, we have so many one bedrooms and so many two bedrooms. I mean, Can you amend it with the actual <coughs> list of what those are? <coughs> yeah, we can. Or can we require that as part of the final? document that gets recorded? Yeah, we can. Other than that, we'll just give them a list of right. unit numbers and which ones are the ones and twos. We've yeah. got that. No problem. Yeah, we're happy to do that. We don't have enough booths on the ground. So, but I think there are parking issue. Has that been dealt with? The parking was permitted as one um, one space per one bedroom, one and a half space per uh, two bedroom, and it's been <coughs> marketed as one space per unit. Why? Because it's hard to give away a half a spot. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. So, so we're saying if you have a second car, it goes into the visitor overflow. Okay. All right. But you have a laundry list of what you need to do, Mr. Genta. So what I think uh, Mr. Gentle was hoping to achieve tonight is to identify those outstanding issues um, 
provide the planning board with an update of where we stand and give them the time frame that these will be achieved I think you've heard some very quick dates for final inspections and whatnot um, I think what we were hoping to do was to be able to apply for temporary certificates of occupancy for just building C which would allow the many uh, people that are chomping at the bit to get in there and, and live there so in in the planning board we're, we're offering the remaining obviously two buildings as collateral for that commitment to finish all these items of course we never get those signs off until uh, we had achieved all of these other mm -hmm. uh, How punch lists. How do you put people in there <coughs> if you haven't inspected or have the certification for the elevator? Or no, no, that'll all be th done. That, that, that would all, any any uh, building department inspectional issues would have to be <coughs> achieved before they would give us a temporary occupancy permit for sure. No question about that. <coughs> Karen, it's it's not really up to the board. I mean, the fire <coughs> department would like. The temporary, if there's, there's a temporary emergency egress out there. It's not constructed per the plan. So they provided you a schedule as you asked about when it would be done. Mm -hmm. The board needs to determine if it's being out of commission for approximately a week, according to the schedule, is significant for occupancy. We or won't likely have anybody occupy these units until this week. Because well, what are the odds that everything else yeah, is yeah, going to be done before you start the emergency access? So, I'm sorry, Mr. Pritchard. I, I was. Uh, um, I just wanted to point out that we don't expect to, even if you gave us permission today, to have anybody in these buildings until the week of the ninth, because we have, as a, as Mr. Gent had stated, these other inspections that are necessary for the building department to give us temporary um, certificates of occupancy. So, in in that the emergency access is is planned on the schedule to be built on the 16th. That's when it'll start. So. It, anyway, I'm, Mr. Pritchett, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Well, that certainly answers right. my question. Oh, okay. My question was, what are the odds that you would actually be ready by the 16th? Yeah, it, it's. And it, if you're not, then yeah. I would say, well, <coughs> take the extra week and build the emergency access and then be ready for the 23rd. Well, we're complete with the building before the inspections right now. Yeah. Well, whatever the laundry list <coughs> was. Quite a list. What the building department looking for. Yep. Well, yes. well, sure. Yeah. Yes. And all those, of those things can be achieved prior to the ninth. My my understanding is what right. What is our next meeting, Karen? Your next meeting is the twelfth. <coughs> okay. I think what we need to do is hold this in abeyance until the twelfth, and, and hopefully at that point in time you will have your sewer, water certificates, and so on. Fire department, you can resolve your land dispute with Mr. Reynolds and at that point we can go forward but there's a lot to be done between now and then. A lot to be done. So rather than being, <coughs> I understand about you know cash flow and, and all the rest of it but public safety is the most important aspect of all of this and we have to put that first and foremost. So you have your work cut out. Hi, hypothetical question. What happens if we find we have a uh, intransigent neighbor who insists on putting boulders on the street? Well, that's something that you would have to pursue with the town of Situate. I think that's that's the road. We have no, we have nothing to do with that. That has to do with public safety, and that's something that you would have to pursue with the town. And you have pointed out that the road is plowed by the town. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I went down and looked at this property. There is the walking path that goes all the way to, down to McDonald's. Which are fourth Forest place. place, yeah. So, who is to say that a push came to shove? So you could talk to the MBTA and have your easement go all the way to Ford Place if you had to. Mm -hmm. So, there is an out here. Mm -hmm. I, I will not suggest or tell you what I think about putting boulders at the end of the right road. Right, 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 right. No. Down that, that yeah. Road. Okay? Yeah. But again, I hope you have a wonderful weekend and that you will be working very, very hard to get all of this done. And we will see. We will be. We will see you again on the 12th. I have another comment for you on yep. this. Uh, Fair enough. On this agreement. <laughs> yeah. Sure. In here it talks about a lease each shall be entitled to no more, no more than two roommates. 
within a unit. Mm -hmm. So are we expecting that uh, one unit, one bedroom unit will have three people living? That, that's, I have no idea. I don't think so. <laughs> you had a couple who had a baby. I guess that would be three yeah. people. But. Yeah. That's what this agreement says. Right? Mm. It says roommates. It doesn't say <coughs> babies. Families. Right? <laughs> so that's the only thing I think you should take a look at. Yeah, we'll, we'll take a look because at it. We'll bat it around. Three roommates are going to try to find three beds somewhere. Right? And that, that feels like no, we're not, not going to be running a rooming house. house. Yeah, no, no, no. That's not the plan. Yeah. Or an Airbnb. Right. So, <coughs> right. Um, so that's the other comment I had on this. Yeah, you can't do the Airbnb. They have minimum rent is three months under the rules, so that's not that's not an issue. I just would like to report one other thing. The um, affordable housing lottery did take place yesterday, and so the um, monitoring agent will be going through the list and seeing if people are still interested in that qualifying them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. So, Good. Um, with the affordable housing partially on uh, handling the um, so we call it the winners or the um, now is there we're just talking about the amount of people in there um, sometimes how they do it is <coughs> they don't have restrictions on how many people can be in a one bedroom to a point when you say they you're talking about so the, the mass housing mass housing uh, yes um, but knowing this vetting through some of the applicants I can tell them that there is restriction well, I, I'm talking about roommates, not families. Okay. Right. So if there's, you know, two-person family with with a baby, um, I would think that that could work, right? But I wouldn't think, you know, you could rent an apartment, advertise for two roommates, and then put three three people in a one-bedroom sure. apartment, right? Um, or treat it as, you know, it's acceptable to bring somebody in as no. an Airbnb on, on weekends or whatever. So that's really what I was getting at here. It's just it just jumped out at me that that would be a pretty crowded little one bedroom unit. We'll try to craft some language that would you know be sensitive to families and roommates and whatnot. See if we can put something together. All right, very good. That wasn't our intention, of course. Yeah. My expectation is you're going to take Bob Vogel's letter in memo. You're going to end up working through Bob to through Bob to us at the items have been addressed. Yes. Absolutely. Yep. Exactly. I think we're the last one on the list, right? <coughs> so I would assume that we'll end up with everyone. all those checked off until he comes to us, right? right. But I just, I'd rather not have us get a dispute whether it agrees or it doesn't agree. No, it's up to the building department. Right? Yeah. yeah. Nice. All right, gentlemen, thank you so much. Thank all you right. very much for your time. Thank folks. you. Have a great weekend. Uh, 8 o'clock. Uh, is this a public meeting, Karen? Public meeting. For site plan waiver at 52 Country Way, formerly Morning Glories. And who is here to represent? Uh, Paul Rodericks, agent for Tony Chen and Gunther Tooties. You guys don't want to use Good evening. Paul Rodericks, agent for Tony Chen and Gunther Tooties. Okay. Tony Chen? Yeah, I'm the owner of the Gunther Tooties. Okay. Yeah. Right, so, if you would like to make your presentation, tell us what you want to do and so on. Oh, perfect. Okay. As you can see, we're all right, we are totally redesigning the building, uh, adding a second story to it, and it is now a much more attractive building than, than what is there. Um, we are planning on. Is it a renovation as opposed to a, a tear down and reconstruct? It is a renovation, yes. Okay, uh, so that that is uh, the, the the front view. This is the side that faces number 50.
Here is the rear. And this is the side that faces Stockbridge, which is where the current drive through is now. Yeah. Which the, the location of that is staying the same. We are, or would like to make some minor alterations to the site. We would like to go from a uh, lot coverage of approximately 9,700 square feet down to 6,700. So where I know that the agreement between 50 and 52 is taking out um, this area between the easement and all that. So this was already agreed upon. And then we want to take out this area right here where the drive through and the menu board and all that stuff will be. And then take out this area right here to get uh, better parking because they're, they're deeper than they need to be. And we'd like to be able to trade off those areas because currently right now, the dumpster pad that they put in in the enclosure is blocking off one and a half spaces. So we would like to move the dumpster pad over here and then pick up one and a half more spaces than what's there. So we're taking away uh, 3,000 square feet and adding uh, 250. So I'm, I'm sorry, I'm yeah? trying to process this. So the yellow part? Is, is green space, right, right currently right now, that is all asphalt. Right. And it's going to be? It's going to be green space, grass. Grass, okay. And so? And right now here, this one in orange is where the dumpster pad is. Yep. And it's blocking off this space and a half that's over here. So the yellow space at the top is also going to be grass? That's also going to be grass. There's currently grass out here that goes to the road now. Uh -huh. And uh, it doesn't need to be the steep, so we're going to get rid of a little, a little bit of that. Where is the uh, stormwater interceptor that's sort of common to 50 and, and uh, there, there, there's, there's one that's located, um, I want to say that there's, there's over here, and then there's another one over here. I thought there was one that was on Morning Glory's property that... Um, there is one on the property. Which the, pro uh, this property is uh, over here. And the, the easement agreement has been so that you can have in and out. And that drainage is, is I believe, right, right in here. So does that get disturbed in any way? No. No. Their uh, number... Uh, 52 they're responsible for putting in all of this curbing right here and repaving all of this mm -hmm. so that we're not touching any of that um, we're not changing any of the grades or drainage or any of that stuff on on this part of the site and so the grass is kind of at grade whatever the asphalt is. grade is it's yeah okay you know, we'll probably have a Cape Cod berm or something going around here, um, but other than that. I provided them the copy of the approved uh, 50 Country Way plan to show where to show the whole layout and the whole landscaping mm -hmm. island there um, as well. And does it show the the zone? Zone A. Or the zone A. Zone, zone A, A is I guess. in the front of the property. Uh, I think it comes across. Oh, sorry. It comes across the front over here, some somewhere, which. It, it is on the plan. The zone A is yeah. on the plan. Oh, on the, the, plan. the back area um, is about halfway off the site. So is there any work being done in zone A? He wants to remove the um, front portion of the pavement, the yellow pavement. That's what he wants to. Well, that's and, probably okay. But and striping. And striping. Mm -hmm. He wants to add. There's no physical construction in the zone A? No physical construction. No, we're not zone. tearing up and doing anything in there. Sorry, I don't mean to derail you. I just no, that's fine. trying to understand what you've done. I mean, as far it, what we're looking at is this is a, a minor alteration as far as the site goes. The building is going to look totally different than what's there. 
Um, but as far as what we have to do in the ground and to the overall site is a, is a minor alteration in our, our opinion. Is it one lane traffic for the, for the drive through Right now it's not, but we're going to make it. This traffic plan has me a little confused in that you are going toward Which way is the traffic flowing? The one way traffic? Tra the the, the track, you know, you, you have the exit for all of the apartments and everything here. This is the, the inn which crosses over that and the drive through will come this way and go out. I know it's showing an arrow of two two ways, yeah. but we have signs that, that we're putting in one way drive through going that way. And what about this other arrow that's heading? That, go, that goes away. I don't know why he Isn't put that on there, but... They have to go that way. So it's, it's just one circular way One around. big circle. All right. That resolves that issue. Okay. And, and as far as I know, the traffic study that they did next door took into account what the flow of this, this is, or was. Your two cars rest. Um. 16 feet uh, along the drive through how do you get two uh, cars through there? What, what do you mean, over, over here? Yeah. Well, the, the, the engineer actually has this drawn where we're putting the curbing in. We're leaving this existing pavement over here. So we do have um, enough space to get another vehicle by, by this area right here. The only place it gets tight is just past the drive-through. Um, and that car will be pulling right away. Um, when Mr. Rodriguez came in to, um, to go over the plan, we discussed, um, discussed the implications and I suggested he apply for a site plan waiver because the second floor that they're adding is really taking the functions, some of the functions on the first floor of storage, um, an office space and putting it on the second floor. There will be no increase in seats. It's 16, 16 seats was what was in Morning Glories. 16 seats will be here. Um, they asked, they wanted to show the uh, changes in the pavement. Um, as you know, there is a curb already out there as part of the 50 Country Way project in the rear. There's a pretty, um, Precast concrete curb already formed. Okay. Um, yeah, so it, uh, we have a pl uh, floor plan for the first and second floor. Yes. In the, in the, you know, the elevations here, it looks like there's possibly enough room for a third floor with the dormers and the height. No, the it's, it's only big it's enough for two. It, 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 it is. Oh, okay. Yeah, two stories only. Okay, that was not my first question. Mm -hmm. Uh, that I, I can't tell you, but it will be under what they require. It will be a lot less than what they have next door. Um, well, that's a yeah, you know, I know. Okay. Uh, 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 um, uh, and then my, my other question was just, do you have, like, I, I understand that uh, you this business has multiple locations now, or at least. It does, there. yes. So I was just curious if you guys have kind of comparable buildings or businesses to this particular location and what sort of the amount of people coming through the drive through is and how many people are patrons are kind of coming through yeah, yeah. during a busy time. Uh, he has one of the location in Pembroke that uh, we changed from a uh, in the middle of the building to a drive through location and that uh, Pembroke uh, Church Street 139 yeah. oh, 230, uh, 254 254 Church Street and, and um, his business you know obviously has improved for the for the drive-through and that was the first 
of his location that he set the standard as how all the finishes are going and, and, and things of that nature. This is the first uh, freestanding building that he'll own. Okay. Fanny, you all set? Uh, yeah, I guess just on the topic of the drive through do you experience, like, I don't know how many people like come to through a business like this. So the only, yeah. the only reason I'm asking is like I don't know if during peak times, you know, what sort of backup in the drive-through is because that's the only at, 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 at from you know seven thirty to nine o'clock in the morning. There's a lot of traffic. Right. A little bit around lunchtime, and then by one thirty in the afternoon, it's almost a ghost town. So is there? And I sort of take. Local Dunkin' Donuts yep. has the same issue here. Is there going to be a period of time when the traffic backs up onto Country Way? No, I don't think so. Because uh, um, the way we do everything, we prepare. So normally, one ticket time will cost about two and a half a minute. That's how we do in Pembroke store, and they are right on the Loop One Thirty Nine. Maximum backup in Pembroke. How many cars? How many car? I don't probably three or four, pretty much. Oh. Yeah, it's not much. I mean, we, there's enough stack between the drive-through window Happy and the menu board of one, two, three, four, five, six cars, and two before it even comes out into the shed. You know, we would have to have 25, 30 cars in for that to impact country way. Yeah. So I don't think there's anything affect to the country way. Yeah. yeah. We are not Dunkin' Donuts, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, it looks like a nice building. I mean, much over what's there. Um, and you, you close in the afternoon? No, we close. We probably okay. going to close about uh, six, seven o'clock at night. Okay. So we want to stay low. Yeah, I, mean, I want to be local. So. Because Pembroke, you close at what four o'clock? We we'll close at four. Four o'clock. Yeah. So. But this door, we probably try to close at six, seven. So that does tend to be a little bit of a bottleneck down there. That can't be because you got the bridge, and then you've got you know there's mm -hmm. no train crossing yet. Yep. Um, and the liquor store. And the liquor stores. They sell. This is what happened to the other building. Just too much traffic congestion. So hopefully that's all flattened out, and we'll look forward to it. Thank you. Yeah. yeah what percentage of your traffic is foot versus the drive I would say why not pretty much a 50-50, because each time is different. So I would say 50. Um, so I think um, um, long period of time, I think a uh, drive do would pay more business than the people walking. So people like stay in the car. So especially during the winter time, so people no one come in. There. Mm -hmm. so. It's going to be 46 apartments there and you can walk to it. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> Bill Wilson? I have some other questions. All right, go for um, it. So let me just walk down my list of questions that went through this. Um, do you own the building, or yeah, you we own the building. He's in the. He He's has a PNS right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, it doesn't close until you get permits. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the stormwater drainage from the building is not changing anywhere. No. Does, does the building currently dump into like dry wells or anything? The drainage? Not that I'm aware of. We're, I mean, we've been over the whole property and I'm not aware of any roof drainage that goes into anything underground. It, the downspots just dump basically onto the pavement. And will the, the, with the reconfiguration, will that change the distribution of the, of no, it's still the same. I mean, it's, we're not changing the footprint of the building. So the roof, lines are changing. the roof lines are changing, but it's still basically the same square footage. So it would be the same amount of water. Right. I'm, I'm more thinking about how it's distributed, right? Yes. The idea is that we don't want it to change the flow. Nope. No, no, no. Adjacent properties. Nope. Right? Okay. Nope. Um, Is the water sewer infrastructure there? Are yes. You connected to both? Uh, connecting to both, yes. And is it changing from what it was? No. Because we're not changing the seat count, so it's going to remain I, the I same. I don't know what it takes to, to make 
bagels or whatever. Yeah. I don't know if you use excessive amounts of water or anything like no, that. We no, just, we use a single amount of water. We boil it up, you know, just boil the bagels mm -hmm. over there. Yeah. I mean, the, the any change in services. Then. User group so. stays the same. Trash disposal is staying the same except the relocation. Of yes. The um, so new equipment. All new equipment. This is part of the compared to for, what's there now. Foreclosure that has all been auctioned off. What is there? And I mean, we're doing a full gut interior, and all, all the equipment is all new. So what I saw was. A grill, an oven, two coolers, and a freezer. How does that compare with, with what was there? Uh, all of that stuff's gone. The only thing that's there now. What are you adding? Oh, what are we adding for as far as equipment? As far as equipment, and does that add to things that are on the roof that make noise? Those kinds of things. Uh, no, I mean we we have the only thing really that comes out of the roof is a commercial hood which would be on the Stockbridge side of where the, where the grill is. And then we have one more vent that for the kettle of where they um, boil, boil the bagels. What about uh, the freezer and cooler compressors and all that? Those are coming out and we're, we're putting brand new ones in. But where, where are the mechanical devices? On top of where they are now. Like right now they have the cooler set up with the uh, refrigeration compressor on top of it will do the same. And is there more of them? No, but we're bigger. We're making that eight feet bigger than what's there. What I'm worried about is the noise it does make with, you know, all the apartments right next to it. Oh, uh, that would, that wouldn't make any noise. The, I mean, they're they're not any louder than your home air conditioning unit. What else is anything different being stored there than was sort of the was with the bakery? I don't know what they were storing there, but the, the main why besides we need room for a second bathroom and an office upstairs is there's a lot of dry storage as far as uh, paper cups and things of that nature. So. Because of the way that the drive through operated before was one car at a time, mm -hmm. and they're going to be doing four at a time. So they, they will be going through more product. I guess the only other sort of comment I have has to do with just the, the design itself and, yep. and the signage. I don't think we really uh, uh, had any real opportunity to uh, sort of discuss what kind of signage is going in. Um, and I would, uh, I would think we would want to have an opportunity to have that reviewed it, because we have a design review committee yep. that we generally, these kinds of signs we generally. And initially one of the things that we talked about with the design review was because we weren't changing the usage that it wasn't going to go in front of them. But if we have to go and, and, and the sign as drawn now is the you know, the architect. There's three signs, right? Uh, there was two. There was uh, in the front here, a small one over there, and then on the drive through side, on the stock bridge side. Yeah. Um, uh, over here. Right. And we don't have any problems, you know, submitting, <laughs> coming back in regards to the signs. That. You know, given everything we've been through, and this is just for fellow members of the board here, it seems to me just the, the look and feel feels like it's going to be a much nicer building, but that we ought to ensure that there's some consultation with the design review committee yep. on, on materials and on, on building materials and sign and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Technically, it's like the waiver doesn't require um, consultation with the design review committee. Yeah, technically, I understand that. So I'm, I'm saying, can we make that? A condition I mean, of a cycle and waiver. Try to keep the feel of right. the village. Yeah. You know, which would have identified what we need. The, the, the flip side of that, just just to yeah. finish this, Karen, is that we would then have to do a site plan review to do that, which I don't think is probably necessary here. Mm -hmm. But 
I'd like to make sure that the Design Review Committee has an opportunity to okay. to work with you. Yeah. Particularly Which, on the signage, but also, you know, we, we're, materials blending in with the apartment complex. And all we're, that. we're similar, but different. You know, we're clapboard, we're painted trim. Yeah, no, that's, we're that's fine. similar, but different. No. Like super light lights and all down lighting and stuff like that. I don't think he's going to paint paint. <laughs> um, so, but we were thinking that basically the, the colors here are kind of colors of coffee. And so I think their buildings are gray and white. This will be a, a, a beige and white. We tried to do the best we, we could. We just on spent that. a lot of time on the apartment complex trying to get the look and feel right. Yeah. And so it would seem like we would be remiss if we didn't get the design review committee to mm -hmm. kind of take a look at this and make sure they yep. they have an opportunity to comment anyway. Um, so that would be my only suggestion. But. All right, so we approved this site plan waiver so we can go forward with the condition that he come back with the signage. Yeah, I, that's what I'm suggesting is that we have a condition that right. they consult with the design review committee on signage and material, building materials, colors, and stuff. Yeah. Um, and then you just report back on that. Okay, so we move that the planning board finds the proposed building work is minor as the second floor being proposed will house storage and office functions that currently occur on the first floor. There is no change in seating numbers of 16 from the existing restaurant and minimal site work is proposed, resulting in an insignificant in nature of effect proposal. The existing and proposed parking count will remain the same at 10. The board proposes to grant the site plan waiver for applicant Paul Rodriguez and future owner Ki Chen yep. uh, for a proposed gun to choose at 52 Country Way with the following conditions. One, construction shall comply with the improvements submitted with the application, signage shall be in accordance with the zoning bylaw, and shall be submitted to the town planner for approval prior to the implementation. Can I change that? Change that to, to um, design review. Signage and materials shall be in accordance with the zoning bylaws and shall be submitted to the town planner and design review committee. Yep. And send, um, at the end of the first sentence, construction shall comply with the improvements submitted with the application except that circulation should be one way. A plan shall be submitted showing this because you wanted the one mm -hmm. way. Yep. You wanted the one way circulation. Yep. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Approval of, uh, is contingent upon all local approvals being obtained from the town of Sichuan, particularly approval of the Board of Health and Building Inspector or Inspection of Services Department. Three, trash shall be handled in covered sealed containers and emptied at least once daily or more frequently if necessary or as otherwise directed by the Board of Health. Four, indoor seating is limited to 16 via tables and counter seating. No outdoor seating is shown or proposed. Five, any further expansion of the use applied for must come back to the planning board for approval. Uh, the only thing that I want to say in regards to the outside seating, okay. that there is currently, or there was currently, outside seating uh, not shown, but as long as the seating count between the inside and the outside doesn't exceed more than 16 seats, is there an issue? Was the 16 for morning glory? Did it include outside seating? Inside. Okay, so we can certainly design it, and 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 what the floor plans that you guys have seen are the very preliminary of where we are. It's still in final design with the equipment manufacturers and all that other stuff, but we can take away some of the uh, public space to 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 only have twelve seats inside and 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 four outside or something of that nature. I'm not opposed to. 16 inside and then having four outside or something. I mean, it, it seems like that's what worked with Morning Glory. So I don't know why it wouldn't work here. Well, you got to make sure you, you have enough parking. Yeah. But, but I think, too, in the summertime on a beautiful afternoon, people would, who would normally sit inside will be outside. Mm -hmm. So I think that it will, the parking will resolve itself. So what would you like to change it to? Um, 16 inside and 
four outside. Wait, what's up? Okay. With no change to parking. What we do currently now, which is all in disrepair, that we will be redoing. What, three tables? Something like that? Two, right there. Yeah, I think there were two tables there before. Um, I, I, don't know, I don't know how many tables outside before it's that. It's a work in progress. Yeah. Okay, I yeah. I suggest that they provide that on the site plan back to you so that you know where the outside yes. tables are going to be so that you know okay. that it's safe. Mm -hmm. okay. And that can be submitted when you bring us your signage and your um, materials. And materials. Okay. Okay. And lighting. Mm -hmm. and lighting. Okay. You need to know the lights. Okay. Okay. Uh, is there a second as amended? We want. We want to ask for public comment. Oh yes. Yes. Public comment. Anybody here want to comment on Gunther Tootie's? All right. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Did I just notice a clock on one of those things? A what? A clock? For the no. no. All right. No. Okay. Imagining things. Okay. We now have um, a public meeting. Site plan waiver, uh, uh, administrative review, excuse me. Uh, common driveway at 1 Crescent Avenue and Bridge Street. Uh, the gentlemen, would you introduce yourselves, please? Sure. So they can hear. I'm Steve Bjorkman from Diamond Development, and this is Dave Vance, one of the partners in this project. I, as a di disclosure, I have done work for Mr. Vance in the past, but have no final financial interest in this at all. Okay. okay. Um, basically, what we have is uh, a site that's been four made. Originally, it was two lots. They went and constructed a dwelling back in the early 1900s um, that went across the property line. It was kind of in the middle of the property. And we've, if you'll remember, we came back in and reformated this back out to two lots again. And we're, what we're doing is we're requesting um, an approval. It's not a special permit or anything, but just a site plan approval for a two lot common driveway. And it's a pretty simple process. Um, we believe that we're going to be uh, improving site distance. I know right now there's some issues in talking to some of the neighbors, and I apologize for putting my back to you, but um, right now there's all kinds of large sumac trees and things like that that are kind of blocking this corner on Bridge Street. Um, for those of you who haven't been out there, it's really kind of a strange intersection in town. Um, Bridge Street itself coming up from the Edward Foster Bridge is a two-way street in this direction and when you come up to the intersection there's a sign that says one way keep right but Bridge Street goes to the left and it's a two-way street so I don't know who put that sign up there but uh, maybe the neighbors might be able to chime in on that um, but it is right now kind of dangerous with all the vegetation and stuff in there if you're coming up in this direction the site that's there presently has three three driveway entrances one on Crescent one right at the intersection of Crescent and Bridge Street in this location, and one further up on Bridge Street in this location here. There's a garage around the back side of the house. So again, the purpose of the common driveway is to try to reduce curb cuts, and we're reducing this to one curb cut. Uh, the bylaw, um, I hate to say the term requires, the bylaw says that the driveway can be 16 feet, but that can be reduced actually down to 12 feet in width with the approval of the fire chief. And after a couple of different meetings with the, the chief and the deputy chief, um, we basically uh, took it down to 14 feet. And what we're doing is instead of stopping it at the end of the common driveway, which is about 75 feet long, we're gonna continue that 14 feet to the back of the house that's on Bridge Street. So he believes that he's gonna end up with actually overall better access to the site 
by doing that rather than have us reduce that down to say a 10 foot driveway he'd rather have the whole thing be at 14 feet and I believe that there is a uh, response to him that came in either yesterday afternoon or this morning I think that, that um, goes along with that um, there's not an awful lot to say um, I, I know in, in reading some uh, some of the letters that we ended up getting from the neighbors about changing the character and things like that what I, what I want them to understand is the reason why we're doing the common driveway here because I'm not holding any secrets from anybody the second lot as in the form a will not be a buildable lot until the common driveway is approved because we're measuring the lot within a different direction what that actually allows us to do is to keep these single-family dwellings and there was a question from one as to what's plan B plan B would be we'll take off the word common we'll still build two units out there but we can connect them and the driveway will be exactly the same so from a from a uh, construction standpoint and a visual standpoint it, it doesn't change whether the driveway is listed as a common driveway or it becomes an access to basically a duplex um, we're trying not to do the duplex we like to do single families out here um, there was some comments in there about a, a, not not myself but another developer that I'm well aware of constructing a rather large home on a very small lot and went uh, right to the setback lines and by us going back to two lots here what happens is between the dwellings you end up with an eight foot setback from each dwelling which is 16 feet if you measure between these it's I think it's over 33 feet right now is what we've got between the two and if I remove that line we actually end up with a potential footprint of 10,610 square feet for a first floor area if somebody else bought the property and wanted to maximize the size of that by us having this be two lots in a common driveway that's been reduced by 2,241 feet because we now have two individual footprints rather than one large building so it's really the purpose of this is so that the legal ownership of this can be single-family dwellings rather than condominiums or a duplex so I just want to try and get that out so everybody understands and if there's a question about that I'm, I'm happy to answer it but I think that once the work is done uh, right now they're all paved driveways out there so as far as your stormwater and stuff is concerned we're reducing the overall uh, impervious area on site we're going to put in a stone driveway um, I think in here is the gentleman that's right across the street from me I think he's got a beautiful driveway he's got the cobblestones at the end of it and it's pea stone up to the house it looks fantastic that's probably 20 to 22 feet wide our driveway is going to be 14 feet wide so I'm hoping that again a lot of common driveways that come in are three lot common driveways they're 16 feet they're paved they have water mains going down them. they've got hydrants at the end so they look more like a mini road and that's not what this situation is um, again only a portion of this is common we have to put in a fire truck turnaround even though they're probably never going to pull in there they have the ability to pull in and turn the truck around off of a bridge street that's a requirement in uh, 720 the common driveway portion of the bylaw and we've extended that a little bit so that we can park two cars off the common driveway because they don't like fire chief doesn't like people to park on the common portion of the driveway um, other than that I mean it's, I think it's pretty simple I mean I'd like to ask you know answer any questions that I can and pull from there. Like the portion of the road that is considered the common driveway it's in yellow my drawing is not. Well, I didn't, I I didn't, I I didn't highlight that. over. If you like to see it, it's 75 feet. So I in, in from the street, it comes in 75. 32 feet. The application says 32 feet. 32 feet long? The fire truck turnaround is 30. Well, the application says 32 feet. That was fine. 75. So it's this from here to there okay and because the, the easement for it is on the plan the easement is a little bit larger than the driveway itself um, the purpose for that is in the bylaw you're required to <coughs> keep two feet on each side of the driveway as loam and seed so the easement is larger than the actual traveled driveway okay. 
My question is Karen. All right, so last, um, this, is, uh, this is able to go through site plan administrator review because it's a common driveway less than 500 feet long and it serves um, less than three lots. So that's why it's able to go through site plan review. You endorsed the Form A at the last meeting and Form A had the notation on it that it wasn't um, until common driveway was approved, it wouldn't be uh, a buildable lot. So I guess the common driveway will be 75 feet long and 14 feet wide and constructed of a six inch pervious P stone. You have um, a common driveway agreement that's included and it limits the, um, they can't make any changes to the common driveway in terms of making it um, impervious material without coming back to more. Um, there's a reduction in impervious surface out here they're, re they're cutting, planning on cutting back to sumac, which I sent pictures to you. And so by cutting back to sumac, they have plenty of site distance um, on the property. Um, just for the record, it's not just sumac. There's other stuff that's mixed in, but there's a lot of sumac in with it. So. Sumac blocked the, picture, uh, the view of the pictures that I sent you. So it could be, the board could approve it. You did have three comments from abutters um, who have um, voiced um, different opinions. Uh, I drove out there today. Actually, I've gone by it twice. The young house is in dire straits. The garage looks like it's about ready to fall down. And it's totally and completely overgrown. And you're right, there's three different drive three different driveways um, also just for the record there's an apartment above the garage and the dwelling itself so it's been a little bit more than just a single family use on that as well interesting okay I'll open it up to the board Steve um, I've got a few comments well first of all just with respect to the application the application itself says 32 feet so you're going to need to correct that I also the application that, was not signed we like to make sure that it gets signed as well. And the um, the third thing on it was the, and, and I'm hoping you can explain this, the, the uh, butters list who were notified. There were a couple of the butters who were sort of X'd out on the list, and I'm not sure I understand that. I, don't, I just got it from the assessors, that's all. So I don't know if they went too far at first or. Well, it doesn't look like it. It, it said 10 Crescent Ave was X'd out. Um, and then there's another parcel that I can't tell what the number is, so um, I'm just wondering why they were X'd out and not notified. I'll check it, but they, okay. that's the way it came from me. I mean, what we have to do is we have to apply with the um, Board of Assessors, and we put in the address of the site. They draw basically circles around to make sure that they cover everybody in there, and that's the list that came back over my phone. So, again, I apologize. I don't know why they're crossed off. I don't know if they're close enough or not. But well, they're within, the, they're within the boundary that they've drawn on the picture. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so I, I guess I'm just asking the okay. question. I'll, I'll find, I can get the answer for that. I mean, they might have, um... Here. We, we didn't purposely leave anybody out. Let's put it that way. This one, this lot here. I'm going to the list application. They, they have that down the below, and they X'd out that one, so. We do look at the applications when they come in. So. <laughs> and, I, and I have those prepared by the engineer, so I, and uh, I apologize that it said 30 something feet. Um, so, um, stormwater, the, the, the letter that came in from, I think, Ross Engineering said it's not applicable. applicable. Yeah. Um, I think in a general sense it is in terms of what's what's happening with the runoff here on the property and is it changing the runoff to abutting properties. So I guess I'd like to know what the answer to that is. There's decreases. So we're under the 15,000 square foot threshold for the entire site and we're not increasing it by more than 25 percent. In fact, we're decreasing the impervious I'm not asking area. about the, the stormwater permitting process. I'm asking about the runoff from from the redefined rebuilt property will it change velocities 
to other properties, it's, adjacent properties. There's no, there'll be, more, there'll be more pervious infiltration on site because we're taking all that stuff off. That, that I get, but you know, when you look at the high storm events, right, there's nothing permeating in that, right? It's, it's running off. What I'm saying is the current site has a profile right now. Yep. Does the runoff from that site, once it's rebuilt, change? Oh, the direction of flow or something like that, you mean? Yeah. No. Yeah. It all, it all, com it all comes down to Crescent. Um, whatever goes out towards Bridge Street, there is a um, catch basin right near the corner of Crescent and Bridge. Mm -hmm. um, so anything that comes like from the entrance of the driveway, which the driveway is flat going in, but anything, if it could get out into, into Bridge Street, there's a catch basin right there within a few feet. Right. Um, so the driveway, explain it to me, the driveway is flat. So it's at grade, it doesn't, there's not, there's no, it doesn't become a barrier to stormwater flow on either side? No. No, if anything, again, what, what we're building is going to catch the water because we're taking out the pavement that's there right now. No, I get that, but you know, that, that happens in low storm events, not in high storm events, right? I mean, water, it gets saturated, it doesn't, it doesn't permeate. But well, we're making it better than what it is now, right? Well, that's what I'm asking. That's what that's yeah. the answer is yes. We're taking pavement we're out taking and we're putting out and putting asking, stone. I'm, I'm not asking what's going down, I'm asking what's going to the abutting properties. In, in Less than what's going down today. Flows, right? Less than what's going down today, right? I don't know. That's the yeah. answer, yes. Less than the answer is yes. Day. So you analyze that, and right. that's what you're saying. Yes, right. there's okay. less. That's what I'm asking, right? Yeah. There's less. There's less, right. There's more pervious area on site after it's done. I get that. Okay. I'm so that, sure means, that, less, that means less water is leaving the site. In, in, every storm, in every storm event, less water will leave the site. Because right now, when the rain falls, it goes down the driveways and into the street because they're paved. So tell me how the current property drains right now. It all drains which way? Down towards which Crescent. Way? I mean, if you look at the, the topography's on the plan, but it all drains down towards Crescent Street. It looks like it drains towards Fifth Avenue. It looks like it drains towards Crescent and at some level towards Bridge Street. So this it looks like it drains in three different directions. All, all of this right here is part of the common driveway, okay? drains in this direction towards Crescent Street. Okay? Everything from here drains in this direction. The backyard over here okay, drains towards Fifth Ave. Which oh, am I looking at the wrong contours then? I don't know if you're looking at the existing Look at 88, 87, 86 going towards Bridge Street. Oh, on this, on this, this right here, you know? Yeah. These three right here? Yeah. And then on the opposite side, it starts at 90 and drops down to yeah, these three, these, 83. These, so it must be draining towards what's called Fifth Avenue here. These three contours right here to build this portion, which is outside the common driveway, this portion right here is going right to the catch basin right here, which is why it's directed right in that direction. And are you changing that? Where we're building the end of the driveway, that's what the three contour lines are. Which again, well, is all, which is also contours. piece, which is also piece though. Oh, those aren't the existing contours. No. So the existing contours are going towards Crescent, and but you're redirecting some of it towards Bridge now. Towards the, right towards the catch basin. There's three, there's three lines right on the edge of the driveway. The three that you just called out. So that driveway is raised three right there. In. That's ones we're putting in, yes. I see. So it's the dashed lines that they're existing contours? No, the dashed lines that you can see from the street all the way out, okay, to begin at the top. Yeah, those are, are existing all contours. Right here. So all those are existing. All the dashed lines that run through here are existing lines, okay? So these existing 90 heads in this direction here out towards Bridge Street. These are pretty level with Bridge Street, so it goes, it goes straight down along the edge of Bridge Street. And on the site right here, these three contours right here, 86, 87, and 88, basically direct it to right where the catch basin is. And that flow to that catch basin is, is the same or less than it is today? Yeah. 
because right now the driveway goes out into Bridge Street and right down the side of the road. It's all paved. Right now the so driveway is paved and it's a circular driveway in the front, so it just all flows down onto Crescent. So both of the circular driveway entrances are on Crescent and it's paved. We're going to have grass and pea stone and and they have a paved um, current driveway at the back apartment, which is a huge slab of asphalt as well that doesn't catch anything. So we're going to be all pea stone or grass and we're going to reduce the current or increase the the purpose amount now. And then on the back side, that's not increasing either. On the fifth I mean, it's not, it's side, not, on the, on the fifth ab side, mm -hmm. which doesn't exist, we're not increasing the amount of flow. No, we're changing the contour, but we're not adding water. I mean, we're adding grass and and stone, so we're doing better than what is currently there. Okay. We're not increasing it. Okay. I mean, does everybody understand that? I do. Yeah. I don't think it's time. Yeah. All right. Bill? Yeah. What's it, what, what did you say, 33 feet between the two houses? The, yeah, and the, the footprints that are on there right now um, are not necessarily the exact footprints of the houses that are going to be constructed. Because we have the one that's too closest to Crescent, we haven't even started to design it yet. But we've got to show something on this plan to show the relativity of, you know, of what's going to be there. But uh, I know that the one that's up on Bridge Street, that's not the footprint. And uh, Dave's working right now with the architect on uh, that particular footprint. So at the time of construction of the single family dwelling, that will end up changing a little bit. But it's basically that configuration. I think your footprint's a little smaller, right? Yeah. yeah I think the, f the one on Bridge Street's probably a little bit smaller than what Because we point. can't change the setback or the driveway, right? So we know it's they're 32 feet apart. Right. They have to be, but they could be more than that because they probably will be a little bit more than that. But at a minimum, they would be the setbacks plus the width of the driveway plus the easements plus whatever. So that's like a... Without the common driveway, the homes could be 16 feet apart. But because we've got the common driveway going between the homes, now we've got a much greater setback. We've got more than double the setback that's required in the district. And then how big, how big are the houses now? The how big are the houses now? How big are the proposed houses? Again, one we haven't started to design. Um, Dave's, I think, was 2,900? I've built it. We built the same house in mine. It was 29 with a detached garage. Um, this one has an attached garage, so. 3,300 maybe. What's the experience with common driveways? Who takes care of them? How do we know it doesn't go into disrepair? There's a whole maintenance agreement that goes on record and like I say, we're, we're required to give you a proposed uh, maintenance agreement for the driveway and all I can tell you is in my experience, the driveways that we've been involved in, I have not heard of any issues with them. Um, there's some other developers I know that had problems where they put the driveway in the wrong location. They had to try and go back and deal with owners afterwards to straighten that stuff away. And I don't know what the resolution was, but I hope I'm smart enough to put the driveway in the right location. You have a common driveway easement and drive yep. in your package. And I can, on your site, on your um, abutters, it's contiguous abutters to the parcel, including those across the street. That's why there's some X's on the west, on the, um, Say again. On, on the plan. Contiguous abutters to the parcel, including those across the street. Right. But did we miss a couple people, though? Is that yeah, it looks like it. Looks like it to me. I, think I don't know not, why they crossed I it out. I don't believe they're contiguous. Yeah, 10 not contiguous. I, I'll check it with the assessors. Across I mean, I Again, it's not something we did. That's the way it came through. So that's all I got. That's all we're looking at. So. And, and, and possibly somebody who was X'd out might be here. I don't know. I'm, I haven't met all the abutters yet, but it looks ten Crescent Ave was the one that was X'd out. Ayers, Dr. Ayers, Dr. Ayers. Oh, he's yeah, just not um, directly across the street. Right, he's not directly across the street at all. He's with, he, yeah. It's direct abutters, not people within 100 feet. So I think they they probably started the list, found out that, that it was 
direct to butters and people across the street. Because Ayers is within 100 feet, but he's not a direct to butter or he's not directly across the street. So maybe they did it right. Uh, I'll check it. And okay. I'll All I was asking. I, I'll check on the other one, too. Yep, absolutely. My question is on the proposed dwelling that goes onto bridge. How much, what is the setback to the next 22 bridge? How much room do you have? Well, we're, re we're required to have eight feet from the property line there. Mm -hmm. Right now, the footprint that I, we have on there is probably about 10. But again, I don't know, you know, until we get the footprint of that house, I don't know. But we I'm, won't here, be for, I'm eight, here for yeah. the driveway, not the houses, actually. Excuse so. me? I said I'm here for the driveway. Um, but we don't have the house designed yet. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, I'm going to open this up to the public. Please identify yourselves. Anybody would like to speak? Steve Grable, 11 Bridge Ave, which is directly across from One Crescent. And I sent a letter last week to the board. Um, I didn't think I would be here. Um, so I'll just reiterate my concerns. I think the main reason for this is to put two very large homes on a property that would normally not support the size that they're looking for. They're both spec homes. Um, the house that is there now has been there for 100 years. There's two driveways. Um, that really hasn't been an issue. Um, and I think it would definitely change the character of the neighborhood. There are no other common driveways in the area that, that I know of. Um, and I don't see that this meets any requirements in the purpose of a common driveway in the zoning bylaws. Um, those are the main concerns. And it seems like Yesterday, I think Steve came by and spoke to some of the neighbors. I wasn't home, but it seems like there's an implied threat that if this doesn't get passed, there'll be condos there. That was the impression of some of the neighbors that, that he spoke with. And also, it came to my attention that one of the developers came into town hall and told someone in the planning department that all the neighbors were on board, when in fact yesterday was the first time that anyone was spoken to. So those are... Those are my concerns. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, I'm Priscilla Grable. I live at 11 Bridge Ave. Um, in reference to even I had spoken to planning, um, what's presently there has actually been a two-family dwelling. There's been two people living there. And I was told that if this doesn't go through, that the option is that it will be a, a two-family home. That's that's what can go on that property, not condos, which was what we were told was going to be there if we didn't get, he didn't get his driveway. And I think that's a totally different perception that has been given to the abutters than what's actually right by the bylaws as to what can be there. So presently we have a large dwelling with two families that live there with a circular driveway in the front and a side driveway in the back. And I, I feel, based on the interaction that's taken place, that how, as for us in protecting our neighborhood and what's there, how do we trust what's going to be there even size-wise? If it could be there, we wouldn't be having this meeting, right? If he had the ability to put these two homes on that property, we all wouldn't be having this discussion. He needs that driveway in order to maximize his profit and build two homes that are now totally clear-cutting a property with there's no real green space left when you really look at the size of the house and where the driveways are going and, and what's taking place. So I don't understand how that maintains the beautification of the royal aspect that Citroen wants as a town. If there's spec houses, this isn't something where he's totally looking at it from a profit base. He is not looking at it from a neighbor base. And I also just feel with the way this came forth yesterday, I don't know if it was in reply to the letter that my husband and I sent, that he felt he needed to go door to door. But I think another budding neighbor did send an email with the same concern that um, it's very unnerving that this took place and how can we trust what's being said here in terms of the size of what's going to be built 
on the small 10,000 square foot lot. I know we, Alley, and our other neighbor, the Thorntons, all did the same thing in the sense we purchased properties there, there were homes there, and we didn't go in there to maximize the property, change the face value of the neighborhood to make it look different. We all improved the neighborhood. We added to the base of what the value of the property is for everybody up in that neighborhood, which really needs to be important for Situate as a whole with all these changes that are taking place. Somebody needs to look at the big picture as how it's affecting everyone else. And I, I just feel that at this point, I don't trust sitting here listening to this conversation that those sizes of those homes are going to be anything bigger than the house that was pointed out on Hatherley Road that from a visual I would like to see the plans because it doesn't look anywhere near 2,900 square feet or 32,000 because of the detached garage. Anyone else? I can respond if you'd like I me to. to respond, please. Just quickly. Um, the assessing records for the house on Hadley Road that we talked about is 2,956 square feet. That came right from the assessor's record. Okay. The house that's going to be close to that one is 2,778, which I think is 170 feet less than the one that we're building there. So I don't think that it's a monster compared to what was on Hadley Road. You're free to drive by Hadley Road. Dave actually built the house over there. It's beautiful. And the purpose of it is to have a narrow house facing the street and have it go further back. So the visual impact from the street is a small Gambrel house. Uh, it's beautiful. Um, as far as somebody thinking that what I'm making is a threat when I say that it's going to be condos, it's, it's not a threat that it's going to be condos. What I'm trying to explain is what the bylaw will allow me to do. So you heard that there's a two-family house there now. Right now, you could get two condos there. All it is is a legal document that turns it from a two-family into legal ownership as two condominiums. So if we build a new duplex on one lot, or somebody went in and built a new duplex, and I'm not threatening this by any means whatsoever, but without this, without the separation between these houses, it could be a larger structure. We don't want to do a larger structure. That's why we divided it back into the two lots. So we're kind of self-regulating ourselves to these smaller footprints on the houses. It's just the legal ownership of these two units. We would like to keep them single-family dwellings. Okay. The bylaw allows us, without coming to the planning board, for any review at all to take this house down, build a house that's under 15,000 square feet of disturbance and 25% bigger than what's there with no overview at all from the planning board and a driveway that will access both of those, which is the exact same driveway that we're proposing but we want to do two single family dwellings instead of condominium. So again, I'm being as, as honest as I can, that's why this design was driven, to keep it single family homes if we can. And I believe we meet every requirement in the bylaw. As far as the common driveway not meeting the purpose of the common driveway, the purpose of the common driveway is to provide guidelines for the planning board to permit driveways in order to reduce the number of access points to public roads. I think three to one is a reduction we want to go with one. I believe we meet the intent of the common driveway. And again, I've probably done, I don't know how many have I done in town, but, uh, and again, I, and I understand the neighbor's fears, I guess, because I've been doing this 35 years. Um, you know, we like to do nice projects, and I think this will be an asset when it's all done. Yeah, I'd like to comment as well. The, <clears throat> the 582 Hatherley Road home uh, I sold, I believe, three years ago for 1.25 million. And that home is probably worth one four now, so that would give you kind of a heads up on this asking price of a house like this. These are not spec homes; these are both going to be, you know, million five homes. They're not. Well, don't say they're not spec. They're, they're, they're not. Right. They're not We're cheap building on homes. spec, but they're custom homes. Right. You know, sometimes people think spec homes, and they think a 
shoebox. A shoebox or something that is not being designed by an architect. Axiom Architects in Norwell is designing the Bridge Street house. Um, a lot of times with a spec home, a builder would build the same house over and over again. It's how they reduce their costs. So although this house, very similar house, has been built and mine it, it, then it will look very similar from the front. The interior will be changing. Um, but I'm addressing it's not a, you know, So did you consider spec home. building these two, building these two houses with front driveways? We can't. The whole purpose of the common driveway, again, is it's the I'm only... I'm asking about the purpose of the common driveway. I just said, can you build these two with individual driveways? No. Why not? That's what I was trying to say to you. you ha in order to measure my lot with parallel with the driveway to get the second lot buildable, I have to have the common driveway. I'd love to not have to have the common driveway, but then the value in the property is to do a two-family, okay, and sell them as condominiums, but that's not what we want to do. This is a very simple driveway to achieve two single-family dwellings on two lots that existed from the 1900s until, you know, they put the house in the middle of it, but there's still two lots on a plan. So we just redivided the two lots back again, and we'd rather do two smaller homes than one <coughs> big home that's connected. We'd like so to disconnect them. Let me ask a question then, so I make sure I understand this. So the frontage for the home... It's hard to see on that plan. ...is off the common driveway. Nope. You can't no. take frontage off a common driveway. So then there's 100 feet of frontage on Bridge Street on the lot that's on the Bridge Street side. It's very hard to see it, but there's a sliver that came in with the Form A, okay? And the lot width is measured parallel to the driveway. Not the frontage, but the lot width is me measured parallel to the common driveway. That's the only reason we're applying for a common driveway. It just keeps them single-family dwellings instead. Not to make them bigger, not to maximize our footprints, it's just to keep them single-family dwellings. I remember somebody commented on that last meeting, why was that, that little sliver, mm -hmm. and yep. that was so they get the frontage. I also think making the driveway stone, which we're choosing to do versus asphalt, and they don't share turnarounds, makes it almost more like a private way. Um, you know, they're not, a lot of times with a common driveway, you'll have both turnarounds adjo adjoining each other. Like on, you it pull off the- somewhat Nantucket like. Right. I understand the abutters' concerns. I really do. Change is very, very difficult. It really is. Um, these are going to be big houses. No question. Uh, will they be the same size as Evangeline? No, wait, they're smaller than that. They're smaller than that. Yeah. We're it's trying to do Gambrell style homes because that's what seems to be selling nowadays. So what it does is it brings the roof lines down to give the appearance that it's smaller, even though you still end up with a nice second floor on it. So we're not putting boxes up there. And they're sort of going to be, for lack of a better description, shotgun houses so that they're narrow in the front. No, back. only Bridge Street. So Bridge Street is narrow in the front and long to the back. Bridge Street's going to look like every other house on Bridge Street. It's just 10,000 square foot lot on Bridge Street, beautiful front porch, Gambrell, blah, blah, blah. Crescent goes the other way. So because that lot runs left to right, Crescent, the house in Crescent is going to look like the house that's there now. It's going to face down towards the harbor. Right. So they're not, and they're, that's the other thing, they don't share turnarounds and they're not next to each other. Like one house is on Bridge Street, the front door's on Bridge Street. One house is on Crescent, the front door's on Crescent. They don't look like each other. They just have a private country drive that's made out of stone. The, the, the right. only other thing that I'd like to mention, there was a comment, I, I'm, I'm not sure if it was in one of the letters or not, I apologize, but um, about how close the homes are together and that that's not really good for the neighborhood. There are some homes up there that have a lot more distance between the houses. They actually sit on potentially two or three lots, which may in the future, depending upon what the investment is for the people that are up there, they would have an ability to sell the house and have somebody put an additional it's home up there. Happened. But it's it, it, it's happened. happened. But right. the point that I'm getting at is that there was concern as far as the closeness of the houses. So after I heard that comment, I drove around Second Cliff and I took pictures of 19 houses that are potentially closer together than the houses that we're building. So it's not something that's out of ordinary in the Second Cliff area, but to my direct abutters, absolutely, they have more distance on some of their houses. All right. And did I hear you say you were going to, the, the construction of the driveway was going to be a sort of a, st a stone apron and then 
pea gravel? Is that what yeah, I'd like to make it look exactly like the guy across the street. I, what, what was his name? Steve? Steve. Steve. It's beautiful. I mean. So is uh, that what you're going to do? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it looks great. And the, the actual um, design of the roadway itself is? It's on the plan. There's a cross section up in the top right corner. Sometimes the, the anticipation of something like this will far outstrip its reality. And I also don't like to think that when people come in here that it's a done deal. It really isn't a done deal. I mean, it's just, I mean, Steve's been before this board many times. 35 and, years. You know, and I've been on and off this planning board for a few years. And it's, um, I have to say, while I don't always agree with Mr. Bajoran, he does a good job. He really does. I just wish he would take a page from the late lamented Eddie McLaughlin. No. I know. Build the same house every time? No. No, 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 no. <laughs> no not, that's not what he did. What he did that makes all the difference in the world, he'd show up on a Saturday morning and he'd gather all of the abutters together and he'd give them coffee and donuts and he'd explain everything that he was doing so that they were surprised. I'd like to thank you for that because I did reach out to the people that I could get a hold of ahead of time to try to sit at a kitchen table or do something to let the immediate abutters know. Um, I did make, give my cards out before we bought the property so I and I I'm thankful that some of them spent the time and talked to me. I wish I could have got to every one of them. I went to one woman's house and I know she had company and I said, I'm, I'm available if you want to talk. Um, but I want them to understand this is the only reason why we're asking for this common driveway. I truly believe it's better for the neighborhood than, and I'm not a threat, but then what could happen had it been somebody else that bought it. That's all. That's all. Right, is there any, are there any other comments from the board? Uh, ben. I guess I'm, I'm a little bit different of opinion. Um, I frankly, the way the market's going in younger generations, I don't have a problem with the duplex going in. And as Mr. As the applicant said, he does a very good job. And I'm sure that a two-family house would end up being a very marketable product and look really nice and fit in well with the neighborhood because that's his goal. Um, I am a little bit nervous because, as both applicants said and we've rehashed, lot two is not a buildable lot unless the common driveway is put in place. So I guess I'm a little bit, from a bylaw standpoint, I'm a little bit nervous about the precedent it would set to you kind of use common driveways to artificially increase density of, of kind of lots. This, that's why I tried to explain this decreases the density. The footprint could be 10,600 feet if it goes back to a single lot. That's the first floor of a building that could go on that site. So by doing the common driveway and allowing me these two lots, we've reduced that by almost 22,400 and something. I don't know what the number is, but um, 2,241 square feet. So we're reducing the density so that it isn't a huge two-family building there. That's, that's why we're doing this. We're, try, we're trying to reduce it by ourselves rather than build a big, huge place. But see, now that, that, that rhetoric kind of sounds like a threat. Why is it going to be a huge two-family build? I don't, I don't understand. All I'm I know saying you can is it right. I, know, I understand what you can do. Because we'd have to. I mean, if you think about what we paid for the building, we couldn't go build a small, a small wait, condex on Wait. But we paid for the, the lot. Ben. Right, so I'm just, ben. that's why we didn't right. buy it. Ben. Because <laughs> we thought we could only build so we would, we, in other words, we would have to. We would have to build it big to recoup. We would have to build a big context. The fact matter, though, that this is a site plan review. Right. right. And, yeah. and the only sort of next step we can have is we don't have enough information on certain things that we could ask you to go back and, and bring. And um, I guess and I, I don't see that. Bad. I would like to see some changes that we just heard you commit to. I'd like to make sure that, you know, the driveway gets built the way you, you propose to build it with the stone. Okay. And all I, th that. I think um, the town planner can chime in on that because we added notes to the plan that say exactly what the construction will be and that it can't be changed without planning board approval. So it has to be a pervious surface. It's the last note. They have the new plan, right? It's also okay. Right. So the construction plans are on there in the top right-hand corner. Bottom left-hand corner has the note that it can't change. 
It has to be a P-stone driveway. It has to be 14 feet wide. And I have to put the fire truck turnaround according to the regulations that's in the bylaw. So and all that stuff the, is there. It has the cobblestone made apron in here too? But that's the only thing that's not. It's actually off-site. Because that'll be in the street layout. So okay. I've two motions it, for the board. One okay. approval, one a continuance. So uh -huh. if you want the applicant to provide you more information, then we could continue to July 12th. So it, it's up to the it's up to the board. There's there's two draft motions, and as you know, you change the measure see fit. Um, I have, I have a procedural question to given that now this is a site plan administrative review. Mm -hmm. We're does that then because obviously when we do site plan reviews, we're looking at a lot of other f factors like landscaping, lighting you know, things like things of this nature, some of which I think might be able to ameliorate some of the abutters' concerns. Are we entitled, to, as part of site plan review, to include those type of conditions on this plan like we would in a normal site plan review, or is this simply regarding the common driveway? No, you can, you can address site plan review for the, for the common drive. It's for the common right. driveway. There's no lighting. I mean, I don't think anybody you out there has, a, has a light at the end of the driveway. The reason you couldn't do if that. If they do, maybe we could match one of theirs if they have a light. I didn't bother to look for that. But, well, I, you know. I mean, my concern is more just, uh, I guess, helping to, you know, with the two houses, helping to have having them fit in better with the neighborhood and also of course like you know lot two that setback's going to be getting much closer you know i don't know if the butter's here or not i could comment on privacy concerns or whatever or what view sheds or whatever but um that's that's more what it is and the lighting i was just an example of what we look at in site plan review the, it's the, probably the, more to do with landscaping and look and feel of the actual site yeah and the, the only thing that i would comment along the line between our bridge street lot and the next one up a portion of that has a fence. I've already discussed with that abutter whether we want to do a new fence or something like that. And there's a pretty significant hedge that, I mean, I'm only guessing, but it might be 15 feet high or higher than that. But it's actually right on their property. So we walked that to make sure that that was going to stay there. Um, again, so I'm trying to take all the concerns in that I can to, you know, to make this work. Well, but you know what? This is about a common driveway. For, yeah. And I think under the circumstances, I don't see that there is any more new information that he can bring to the table than he already has. I mean, I'm not sure. It is in his best interest to landscape the daylights out of this, to make sure that this is a medical, as it stands right now, the place is a mess. It's an absolute eyesore. And does this plan contain a landscaping plan or some kind? No. It's just, a, it's just for the no. common driveway. The, 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 well, the, the, only thing that, driveway. the only thing that we show on this plan is a hedge that's going down the side of the driveway, and that's just for us for marketing purposes. Right. So it's not between our two houses. In other words, it doesn't, doesn't do anything for the neighbors, but it does something for our two houses. But like I had said to the neighbor, as soon as we know what we're going to have for a house there, we're, we're going to walk right over there, and I said I'll give everybody the plans. If they give me email addresses, they have direct contact to me all the time. And we'll show them the house plans. They can see the landscape plans as they come in. But this is merely a 14-foot wide driveway is what we're looking That's for. That's what we have, Karen. I mean, technically, the site plan review, it's, it's, under, it's under 500 feet. So and the bylaw does say, except that the application requirements shall be those necessary in the opinion of the planning board to demonstrate that the common driveway meets the standards of review under 770.5. So if you determine that you need more information, you can ask for it. But that doesn't talk about the houses. That talks no. about the drive. I did ask them if they would make every effort to keep the um, Japanese maple out there because it's an unusual driving. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think one of those standards of review is about um, identifying trees of particular caliper trying to save there's, them, there's right? a broken there's a are broken you, one are you cutting down how many trees no. are you cutting down I, I haven't counted them but there's a broken tree right where the driveway is going I think that's actually might even be hitting the house maybe anything six inch or larger uh, well the one that's broken definitely is I mean the one that's broken is probably a anything 12 else? inch diameter there, there's a large there's a large tree that's up in this location here 
which is, uh, I guess you'd call it northeast corner, I think. Um, but that's not going to that, be addressed during the, the construction of the common driveway. No, no. No, again, that's landscaping for the house itself. Right. The, the one that's, the larger tree that's right where the driveway, I believe it's right where the driveway is going, is broken off, and I believe the tree is, like I say, right almost into the house. And that's the only tree that gets uh, again, cut down? I didn't count the vegetation to see how much is No, there's a lot of, for, for the common driveway? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the common driveway runs through the middle of the house right now. So yes, there's not a lot of trees being affected by the common driveway, right? Doesn't it run? No, it's just it's right on the edge of on the edge of the road. There's one big tree that snaps. No, but where's the common driveway now? The existing it runs right through the middle of the existing house. The Close one, the driveway it. that goes in there now. The one that we're gonna put in. What, the one that we're gonna put in is a little further down the road from the existing driveway that's there. It goes right where, through the middle of the house. Yeah, it goes to where the porch. There's a porch area yeah. on the house, but so what I'm saying is between there, the porch and the house. No, there's a, I mean, they, they probably know better than I do, but there's a tree that snapped off and yes, fell towards vegetation. the house. There is quite a bit of vegetation right where he's talking. But yeah. Behind the sumac that he's saying he's going to remove, there are a lot, there are rhododendrons, there are a lot of beautiful shrubs and trees that go up to that porch. And the, the tree he's referring to is a cedar tree that fell on the porch. It is not snapped on the side of the road. It's so it's leaning. It, 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 there's, it, there are quite a bit of shrubs and trees that will be clear cutted from the property for this common driveway. It is not, there is quite a bit, and there is a massive tree in that back corner that I don't know how that tree would stay there based on his plan on how he would build those houses the tree that abuts the Thornton's property is a large, large oak tree. So there are several, several trees that have been there. There is a bir there's actually even um, a small birch tree there and whatnot that's in the front. So yes, there is quite a bit of vegetation that will be in the oak tree. Which tree? The one that's in the back? Yeah. No, it's not part of this application. None of that is part of this application. No, the stuff that's right between the porches, I certainly could go in there and take a couple pic more pictures of the beautiful things that are between the street and the house. And if it, if the tree didn't snap and it fell over, I'm sorry, the tree that's down on the house, I mean, I, All right, it's... Enough. Yes, sir. Hi, my name's Ted Thornton. I'm uh, on a butter at 7 Crescent Ave, which is on the other side of 5th Street. Um, just some information I guess I'm looking for. I don't have the benefit of a site plan in front of me, a post site plan. So uh, the lot currently is graded towards Baker Street, Fifth Street. You mean exist, existing grades? Existing lot. So yeah. I haven't seen proposed. Oh, yeah. And I think you said earlier that the new runoff is going to go towards Bridge Street and Crescent. At, at the, no, so at the end of it. Go towards Fifth, too. At the end of it, between the end of our lot yeah. and Fifth Street, that grade's going to be brought up a little bit. But it's it right now it grades towards fifth. It's still going to grade towards fifth in that area. And again, that's house grading. It doesn't have anything to do with the common driveway at all. Um, I was and concerned about runoff and where the water was going. You to can't go. put it, any more water than already exists on anybody else's property. <coughs> it's the law. That's our, our stormwater bylaw. Yeah. Well, you it, can't it, do it. And again, it, it goes in his direction. I, I believe we chatted with your wife also yeah. as yeah. soon as we did this. Well, there's some landscaping in that area. That there's, there's landscaping in that area that we've said we want to get together with the neighbor as well and look at the landscaping between our place and your place as well. So I'm willing to work with all the neighbors, always have been. So This is about a common driveway. Okay. What is the pleasure of the board? We have a motion to approve and we have a motion to continue. What is your pleasure, people? Bill? It's voted. It's voted, all right. I move to approve the site plate administrator review for a common driveway for 1 Crescent Avenue lots 1 and 2 with the following conditions. One, construction shall comply with the plan entitled common driveway plan of Citrus 1 Crescent Avenue, Citrus, Massachusetts, by Ross Engineering Company, incorporated date 61218, except as may be modified to meet the conditions below. 
Two, there is a decrease in impervious surface from the existing conditions by 400 square feet for lot one and 464 square feet for lot two. The common driveway is to be constructed of pervious piece stone six inches deep and 14 feet wide. This cannot be changed without further review and approval from the board. Three, a pre-construction conference is required prior to starting construction. The applicant will provide a deposit of $5,000 prior to the pre-construction conference to guarantee cleanup of the site and providing an as-built plan showing the common driveway, its easement, and the site grading and amenities. Four, the homeowners of the property serviced by the common driveway shall be responsible for the maintenance associated with it. The common driveway shall never be considered for acceptance by the town. Five, if changes to the plan result in the need for a stormwater permit, the applicant shall file. Six, the town planner is to be notified upon completion of construction. And seven, the standing conditions for common driveways approved by the planning board after a public hearing on December 17, 2015, shall be included as conditions of this decision as modified by the board herein. Is there a second? Second. Uh, discussion. Discussion. Two things. One is that I think the description of the pea gravel road needs to include the um, the cobblestone apron, and I would ask that we get a detail of that as a submittal for review and approval. Um, second is that. I would ask that you do an inventory of where the uh, common drive is going to go of the plants that and trees that are going to be eliminated and provide that feedback. I'd like to hear it and know if there is a way to mitigate what's being taken out if it's of a particular size, right? So um, I'd like to know. I mean, everybody's sort of guessing at what's there. I'd like you to tell us what's there, and and then uh, I'd like to be able to address it at that point. You want my botanist to tell you what's there because I couldn't tell you. Just want an inventory of what you're yep. going to cut okay. down. Okay, right? inventory at driveway. Particularly the if it's trees, the caliper of the trees. Those are my two proposed amendments. So do you want this at a public meeting? I mean, an inventory of trees and plants on the common driveway shall be provided to the board at a public meeting. Yeah. <coughs> is there a second as amended? Second that. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. And and again for the abutters, I want to work with everybody. So if you don't have my information, I'd like to give it to you before okay. we leave. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Oh, sorry. <laughs> All right, we have. Um, Can I ask one other question? Yes. I sent around uh, a lot of to the standard conditions. Did anybody have a problem with that? No. I just wanted uh, to. I mean, if you let us know in the next few days. Let me look. I, I have to admit, I didn't get a chance to look at it. So. Uh, and I'm sorry, I was out last week, so I didn't. Everything got sent short. Yeah. yeah. I know. It was pretty loaded. Yeah, it was, I mean, we've been a little busy in the office, so um, we've done the best we could. Okay, well, um, I'll, I'll take a look at it next day or two. I mean, okay. I'll, I'll provide comments on it. But I'll give you my comments on it. Old business, new business, vote signatures under the Municipal Modernization Act. Signatories. Signatories. What does that mean? Oh yeah, what does that mean? Just, um, last time you voted um, for signatures on the Municipal Modernization Act, and it was it was Ann and Beth, but Patty was named clerk, and usually you have they usually you have the clerk be able to sign bills and etc. So that's what we were trying to. Um, so do we need to add somebody or subtract somebody and add somebody? Switch me for a pass. Switch, yeah. right, switch oh. Ben, ben, Patty, and 
It's because we get. Um, I would think Council will use signing as well. So. <laughs> it's because accounting gets a little picky sometimes, so we need to make sure that we're totally legal. So it's supposed to be the clerk who signs it. Is that totally legal? No, it's it's whoever you designate. But I mean, oh. it, oftentimes the clerk will sign the bills and the minutes. Okay. You quoted previously that the the chair, the um, vice chair, and the clerk can sign four days. And you usually preference having the chair sign. Okay. So I move that we. Uh, have Patty sign. Is there a second? Sure. All those opposed? <laughs> it's passed. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Approved minutes. Okay. I move to approve the meeting minutes for June 14th, 2018. Is there a second? Same as email. Yes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any other minutes or is that it? We have bills. Okay. We're Accounting. all caught up. We're all caught Mary's up. Got us all caught up. So yes. it's good yes. job. Yes. Great good job. job of getting us caught up. <laughs> Accounting? Mm -hmm. I move to approve the requisition of $287.50 to image resolutions for printing of bylaws, for $2,000 to Merrill Corporation for stormwater bylaw revision, for $90 to MAPD for Brad Washburn membership dues, for $1,040 to Merrill Engineering for construction inspection for 90 in, in vinyl Curtis Estates. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Liaison reports. Um, I attended a water resource committee meeting this week. Uh, I guess the first part is kind of a water update. Um, one thing that's kind of alarming is that the water use has been extremely high recently, like kind of on comparable levels to like 4th of July week. Um, and Kevin Cafferty commented that some of that might be due to undetected leaks. There's leaks all over the place, and Hummer Rock is a particularly bad area. But that some of this could also be behavioral and usage factors, but we don't really quite have a way to track all of that at this time. Um, the other thing is... Can I ask you a question? Sure. Did they propose a way that they were going to be able to figure that out? Uh, segue that maybe into the next okay. piece, which is <laughs> update on uh, how, like this water study, yeah, um, comprehensive water study, and it seems like right now there's a bottleneck uh, happening in moving this along, and uh, it might be a funding issue. It seems like the scope of work that multiple boards want, including us, is a little bit more than what they originally fund budgeted for and um, so it's a matter of working things out in town hall getting all the money lined up and kind of moving forward um, is this told about this money that's so part of it should be yeah. but not, not none of that has been certified yet or whatever but that's this is coming from kevin cafferty i was before so um well, i think there's a move foot to have a coordination meeting on this i've been waiting for it so so bye um, another additional study, but this is more DPW concern, is, um, has to do with water rates and kind of what we should, should or should not be charging for water rate, and that that's still something that needs to be kind of followed up on. Um, Dolan Well and Reservoir Projects, there's still just progress being made to get those going. And then the last big thing um, was about the water offsets program. So they're still, they have to meet with um, uh, a couple more boards and then work out some of the logistics and kind of get the final policy together and then they plan to present to Board of Selectmen hopefully uh, looks like maybe by the end of July or early August and they're I already mentioned last meeting they'll be asking for a letter of support from planning board so I had them maybe shoot us some language for how like and then this final document is that something we'll get to see before they submit it? Uh, oh yeah sure okay yeah and then I think once they present to the board of selectmen, I think that will be revisions. And, but they, they do, I think the policy is going to live in the water and sewer regulations. So originally they were talking about maybe a general bylaw or something, but I think they're going to try to avoid some of this going through town meeting mm -hmm. um, just because it will be uh, easier to get things implemented, they think. Thank you. Cool. 
um, Economic Development Commission held a meeting at the brewery on Monday concerning zoning issues, and there were over 60 people there. It was very, very well attended, and people felt that they were being informed and were going to do it again in um, probably early fall, just to keep people in the loop so that they know what's going on and none of it comes as a big surprise. And there were concerns uh, in terms of the neighborhood Jenkins Place, and people feel that they're being displaced, but it has been a business district since the 50s. So it's something that Brad's going to sit down with the neighborhood and see what we can do. And uh, I went to the Hover Rock meeting on Monday night. It was interesting for the burn nourishment. Um, it's pretty contentious. It's literally a neighbor against neighbor. Um, um, Mara, Curran, and uh, Nancy Durfee did a great job. Uh, they need 35 signatures for easements, and they have three. I thought it was a little unfair. Um, a lot of the residents accused the selectmen of threatening them, which is not the case at all, which is they clearly said we have X amount of money, and if you don't want to use it in Hummer Rock, then we're going to take it someplace else where it's needed. Um, they want to raise the, the road by 10 feet, and, and the berm nourishment is different than beach nourishment. Um, but I think they have a long road ahead of them. They only have till September 1st to get all those um, signatures in. So there's a lot of pushback down there about what's going to happen to their easements if the project doesn't come through, or they're going to be able to have their beaches back again. So, and their big concern is why can't they put the sand on the road back on the beach? Nobody seems to know that answer. Why can't they what? Put the sand back on the beach. From? From the, when it wash over. Oh. Yeah. Is it the overwash? Yeah, the overwash. Now it's all going to the river. The river's rising. Yeah. So, it was an interesting meeting, and uh, I think they'll, there's obviously more scheduled, but um, we're waiting for the federal government to give some input to it for, for the Anyone else? Bill? No. Can we go to traffic rules and regulations to talk about the street light at the end of being a lot road? Can we do it? Well, I can. I can. My neighborhood, you can't get out of my neighborhood. Is just, that? Just send an email. I'll bring it up. Okay, you. thank you. Thank you. And it's 28th, 25th, 28th or Okay, it's thank you. I don't, I don't it's getting crazier and crazier right there. You can't get out. Karen? Um, well, we remain very, very, very busy, and we have multiple applications that are planning on being being delivered, and um, that's pretty much what I'm going to say. We've got the zoning bylaws done. We're working on getting the zoning map printed, and we're working on um, trying to get a first pass on um, stormwater regulations. Yeah, well, the, that first pass, I was going to ask you that. Um, what's the process? Are there, are there other people involved, or is it just a planning department taking the no, first cut? There's other, um, we've had a meeting with, we've had an internal meeting with conservation and planning. Mm -hmm. um, we've had a meeting with some developers, and we had, we're having a consultant take the first pass at the, based on the input that he's listened to in the um, meetings of the um, regulations. Okay, so we that's feel a wrap. we'll see at the Oh yeah, it, it, okay. we feel Who's that the it's Josh Bose of Merrill Engineers. We feel that it lends a little bit more credibility. I mean, so once we start getting a draft, um, we'll continue having more meetings and we'll provide um, your draft. We're, we're looking to try to go to some type of some type of uh, kind of like default standard and a standard where there's um, minimal review too, but there'll always be review. So we're trying to simplify the process. And what's the what's the story on the, the master plan? I don't know yet. Uh -huh. No, I don't know yet. It's 
it's going to, I mean. July 1st, we're, we'll have the. July 1st, the funds will be available, right. so um, we'll have to start getting um, proposals for and putting out our bid. Anything else from the board? I'll entertain a motion. Bill's motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much.